Okay, I'm good. Oh, yes, thank you. Uh, yes, you are doing a log. <laughs> you are now. Uh, I would check the pin for what's happened in the last while. But I don't want to. <laughs> are Is we live? Uh, I'm yes. Internet shitty, so I'm just recording. Okay. Captain's log, start at 54, 455.7. The expedition is en route to the last location of the USS Kismet, which has gone missing. Um, we're mere hours out. We're running our engines at maximum efficiency currently. Um, unfortunately, we probably won't be able to upkeep this for too much longer. We're stressed as it is. With any luck, we can find out what happened to the Kismet and the missing vessel uh, she was escorting the USS Salamander. From my understanding, they were transporting sensitive Halkett crystals. Well, I do not know, or know much about these uh, crystals. It was of vital importance to the Federation. Whatever happened to the Kismet, I am sure we can find them in the captain's log. It's best going to get off the cuff. Hey, it's fine. It's more of a the 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 pins are always just a nice little, or more of a so you so the captain knows where to go from rather than like what happened. It's like here, here's what happened. Uh, but we begin our first scene as the USS Expedition. Let me make sure I did the map right. I did. Drops out of warp into the last known location of the USS Kismet and the USS Salamander. Uh, at present, uh, Captain Prax and uh, Lieutenant Commander Blackwell, the only seniors that the expedition currently, as the rest are, were not able to catch up with the ship as it basically had to race away uh, on uh, immediately to attend to the problem. And even then, you got it, uh, it was a just uh, just under two days worth of warping at as fast as the thing could take you. So what what information is available through the databases and fleet records on Calcat crystals? Um, Quite a bit. There sh should be. And do I do we have access to say Pin's latest log on the fleet reports where he talks about their psychic weirdness? Uh, you do have access to the fleet reports, and I believe that this in the Discord has the latest information on Calcat or it's the most general uh, information um, on it. Sorry, I'm real bad at writing reports for it. <laughs> um. Yes, it's you do have access to the last fleet report that the any fleet reports in the Discord that uh, has Kismet on it and such. It's right. that's known. Um, as for Calcat, that's in the system. Uh, what's not logged in the wiki for Calcat is that uh, the director of research, medical research on the Calcat Crystal people, is, is uh, Lieutenant Commander uh, Efrix. Well, it's not great for the Calcat program because that means that they lost their main director and the person who knew the, much, the most about it. Okay. Uh, would it also would it also state what the captain's uh, position is in regards to that? Uh, you can append you can append that, or if you like, because I, I know it's. It's it's one of the he does technically have an official position in regards to that. Yes, he he's the uh, uh, captain. Uh, Grenin is noted as the uh, lead preventing the uh, proliferation and trafficking of Calcat crystal people. 
and if anything, this this journey of bringing Salamander uh, the, the Salamander's lo- uh, payload as a, uh, all the way back to Calcut Two was going to be a major step in returning um, a, a massive amount of Calcut back to their homeworld. And now all those Calcut are now unaccounted for. So that's kind of why the Tenth Fleet Admiralty has kind of put this on priority. This is kind of a big deal. If this if this doesn't go the right way. So is there any hard information uh, that's been logged about this cumulative uh, effect of multiple apparently Calcat inflict- infected people? Uh, the more of them there are apparently knocks people out or something according to Penn's log? Uh, there's effects like that. Uh, in general, Calcat are... Uh the more of the crystal there is in, co- in proximity to each other, the more powerful their sonic uh, okay. reach is, and the more intelligent it tends to be. That's why Calcat 2 is a very hyper-intelligent hive species. Um, so, likewise with black-red crystals, any any negative effects one would want to cause are magnified in the same way. You can get better, bigger and better results. In fact... Uh, not that long ago, the Kismet ran into their ship, almost got overrun by Calcut Crystals, but they, uh, through the efforts of FRX's, uh resonance device, along with uh, some of the modifications by uh, one... Uh, I remember them as Hijack. I forget their char- the character's last Iran. name. Iran. Iran. Uh, they were able to uh, make a device that could resonate a red-black crystal into a blue or calm version of Calcut. On a ship-wide level, we yeah, had already okay. Starfleet Medical had already come up with one that could do it, like for a few in a small space with a resonance field. Field. But, uh, there's also a. We haven't actually had a chance to work on it and like see how we, the extended task on it, but we were working on a handheld version of it, and I think we said that it had been completed, but it was still going through testing. Yeah, it's still in the experimental stage. Yeah. Medical bays can have a Calcat resonance device fitted or have one installed and plug it into the main power of the ship. Because it, it's, it's a big, like, tabletop, like, desktop device. It's a huge thing. Because right. the crystals are usually pretty big in themselves. But if you want, like, a more portable version, that's something the Kismet was working on. They just never... They're still in the experimental stage. But records show that they... And you would know this as a as a CMO with access to Starfleet Medical. Um, that is a thing that Kismet has made, but it's one of the. I'll put it to you this way: if you wanted your decalation to, because we have a working prototype. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. And any information about this? Because what's concerning me, particularly from Penn's log, is is the the line. Um, where's Penn's log? There it is. Um, turns out the closer all these things are to each other, the greater the knockout effect it has on people without psionics. So... That had to do with something that you won't have information on. Yeah, yeah he, he didn't Fair give... One, he didn't give... Uh, some of the logs lately have, have been uh, clipped a bit for the set. Fair enough. <laughs> Redacted. Sorry, I just need to kind of catch up. Redacted, yes. Yes, the there twinkles. there are some redacted bits. <laughs> that and pen sucks at writing locks. But basically, blue calcat, good, groovy, calm, go along, get along, red, black calcat, not so much. Uh, in short, blue are the calm, healy types. Red are the soldier, police, defenders of the race types. No. Um, so they're naturally suspicious. Um, and red black, uh, bl- the black that's in the red is you get a red crystal and you infuse it with a material that Starfleet hasn't figured out yet, but it's this material that's somewhere in Klingon space that you can. Red crystals are very resistant to being told what to do, sonically or otherwise. They're just that's just how they're made psychically, um, but and by personality. But with the black injected into them, they kind of they become very um, suggestible and pliable. And you can get them to do things they normally wouldn't do. And that's why it's such a terrible thing, because it's uh, psychics who've examined it have described it as an over- the black as an overwhelming sense of despair and hopelessness. Like the crystal just gives up. And that's why and the only reason and the only reason it doesn't just die there and then is that the crystal is somewhat perpetual. It just exists. It is. 
It couldn't die if it wanted to, sort of thing. Fair enough. Until it explodes. <gasps> yeah. And it explodes. <laughs> yeah. Red they crystal. Uh, red crystals can, uh, when subjected to high energy uh, impacts, such as from phasers and such, uh, chain react and explode. Because once upon a time, cow kept were used as dilith were were uh, refined into dilithium. Mm. Okay. Yeah, that was the first time the Kismet encountered the cow kit. Uh, quick question: Is the expedition when entering the system at yellow, or green? Uh, so. Probably yellow due to the fact that the Kismet is uh, missing. Okay, I'll We're change. not exactly aware of their current conditions. I'll swap how it. they went missing. I think so your Cowan shields are up automatically. Our condition is shit out of luck. <laughs> well, we don't know that. So. <laughs> We're pursuing you could be dead. So we could. We don't yet. know. Starfleet just send us here to recover the cow cat. That's all we know. Also, if they're red and they decide that you don't like you, if you try to remove them from where they've bound themselves to someone, they might also explode. A lot of exploding, come to think. Especially, especially if they're connected to shoulders in the case of anyone from the... From the I think, the ball is, I think that we should get um, explosive experts, all of us. Or, um, something I like do not that. approve of these exploding red cowcats, and you may quote me on that. Hey, Fair we enough. had an explosive expert. Remember what happened with her? She blew up. Tell me she got blown up. No, she got she blown up last time I uh, <laughs> uh, Aron, uh, tried to disarm some uh, cockat. That helped. She did actually manage to do something without exploding, but when Efrex was using her, she exploded. I'm sorry. It's... To be Is fair, we were in a minefield. It's not my fault. Say again, Prax? Um, I'm ordering uh, our helm officer to begin the standard search pattern. Uh, you can give me a control command uh, difficulty of two to set up the advantage of a proper search pattern to aid in your search. The next um, mission, expedition will help with, uh, we'll say computers plus con. You take survival for a focus. Ask me. Yeah, I'll give it to you actually. It's a stretch. Uh, <laughs> take a threat for a bold command. Sure. Take that. Oh, you made it. Great start. Uh, nice. Bold. Ah. It's a good thing that happens too. Okay. Oh, there you go. Get a momentum out of it. Who wants the momentum tonight? Um, Blackwell has actually a pretty good control science, so I can run a sensor sweep if you want. Is Blackwell uh, taking a sensor sweep of the area? Is that all right, Prax? That's fine with me. Okay, yes. Your stats are probably better than the actual uh, NPC stats. So I'm looking at control oh, science. Uh, you're looking at control. You're looking at um, reason science. Uh, difficulty of. Oh. been a bit too geez uh let me think that has been that long so we'll say what? 
So it'll be difficulty four, but you can succeed at cost if you if you only hit difficulty three. Wow. Is this assisted by the ship's sensors? Sign? Yes. So uh, we have advanced sensors. Metal drops by one. <gasps> they have the sensors too. Yes. So I'm um, base difficulty three now. Base yeah. difficulty is four, but if you hit three, oh, you're, yeah, base difficulty is three. Succeed at cost at two. Sorry. Okay. Fair enough. Maybe spend the momentum. Yeah, definitely going to be spending the momentum. I'm tempted to spend a determination. Yeah, I, I'd save it. Oh. It's gone now. Tell you what, and I'll also give you uh, two bold for the fourth die. Sure. Oops, no, no, not to all players. Stop that. Xenobiology is a focus. Uh, an increased complication. No, don't do it. Yeah. Uh, well, pins on there. Infectious diseases as a. Sorry. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> I will remember this next time. I need to take one of Spec Ops. <laughs> That's right. I we going to say Grenin if you if you were going with infectious diseases. That's a fair point. <laughs> Adler has been spotted, so. <laughs> right, so here we go. Here goes nothing. Oh. Ow. I eat Blackwell. That's three momentum. Oh. It's okay. When it really, really counts, that's when the complications come. Uh, you notice on sensors three. Uh, it's been. Uh, over a day, over a cycle since uh, there was any ships in the area, uh, so that does complicate life a bit. Uh, however, uh, given the advanced sensors of the expedition and your training and, and uh, reading, uh, the very complex sensor readings, even if they're the most minute of minute, uh, you do detect there were that there were at least. Actually, you made it that far. And there was some more down here. You detect that there was the presence of several ships in the system uh, about a cycle ago. Um, you could determine the ships, the, the old sensor readings with the blue dots on them mm -hmm. uh, were all uh, federational ships. Okay. Uh, uh, they had that signature. This ship, you don't quite recognize. It looks a Federation design and energy signature, but it doesn't conform with any known ship uh, class. Now, that may be just a sense. A less experienced sensor operator might say that's just a. It's a glitch in the system. It's a sensor ghost. Things like that happen. No, no, you're. You're not wrong. You know what you're looking at. That's Federational, but you don't know what ship it would be. Okay. Uh, over here, on the little right. Are actually, I should have marked those differently. I should mark these like this. No, don't do that. God dang it. Okay. The one red dot seems to be a Klingon vessel uh, signature. Mm -hmm. uh, the purple dots seem to be uh, very old D7 signatures. Uh, whether it's Klingon or Romulan, it, you can't really say because the tech was basically the same back then. Right. Yeah. And they're used by both powers. Mind you, they're used as much as Miranda's and, Su and Obrith's are used in modern-day Starfleet. They're right. used, but they're not front-line, chip of the right. lines. <laughs> so what am I detecting here? Old energy readings or... Uh, Faint energy readings. Because uh, when you have a, an end, uh, a ship sitting in the middle of space for that much time, it leaves a lot of energy because of the warp core. And you know these ships would be larger than scale three, like little shuttles. If there was a shuttle in the area, if there's if there's any small fighters, you won't detect them. It's been too long. All right. But big um, ships, I'll, you'll detect. I'll share all this information with uh, the captain and uh, plot the location of the sensor readings and send it to uh, her command panel on her chair. Intriguing, Doctor. Yeah. 
I can't even lock down what type the nearest type of Federation vessel the nearest signature is. I certainly haven't ever seen anything like it, and the database doesn't either. Let's cross-reference the uh, energy signature from the other three Federation signals, see if we can't match them to um, what vessel they were. I'll do my best, sir. So, <clears throat> excuse me, yeah. See if I can't, the clearly federational signals there, mm -hmm. uh, see if I can't uh, match them to any known federation vessels in the database. And, you know, let me start with the Kismet and the Salamander. Uh, I'm willing to, you can either spend, uh, I'll say spend one momentum to get that answer, or you could roll um, what amount to control plus con difficulty of one assisted by ship's computers con to verify the ship uh, signals. Uh, signatures, yeah. I should say. Duh. Prax, what's your con like? That might be a roll for you. I'm only my, my con's only a two. So your NPC crew might be better at this. That's true. Or do you want to just spend it, Prax? Uh, we'll just spend the one momentum. Okay. Since it's really a complication at this point. So. Yeah. Stand by, cross referencing. Yes, Captain, it looks like I have uh, firm IDs on the energy signatures of the USS Salamander and the USS Kismet. I'm a what about that pilot. third signal? What ship did they meet with? Anything coming up in the database, GM? Uh, yeah, that will have to be either an additional momentum or roll. Because the signal is not immediately available in the 10th Fleet Expedition. You know it's not a 10th Fleet ship. That much you can tell. Because you have... No, and in my head, uh, I think that there's the, the hero ships of the 10th Fleet. And then there's the side guys that do all the little things. Fair uh, enough. So it's, it's none of those. All the big ships are named that we know like the expedition, the Kismet, the Artemis, and so on. Right, right, right. Do you want to risk the... What's the diff on the roll? A uh, one. Because it is you, it is a Federation ship. It is logged in the database. You just have to dig through Computers it to find it. Computers con? Y'all. Yeah. Yeah. I thought it was control con. Well, no, the this, this ship, I believe, is assisting with this. Oh, right. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we'll go ahead and just, I guess, use it. Uh, there's three dice that would be rolling between the ship and the computer. I don't think we need to spend for an extra. Come on, complications. Or I do that. that, that's fine. <laughs> like Again, that. Why'd I give you a talented crew? All right, because you're a hero ship. All right, we are. We got medals and everything. <laughs> Results on screen. Got it, Captain. Looks like the U.S. Tiananmen. And you said it with you said it with uh, a lot more uh, confidence, a lot less struggle than everyone else on the Kismet hat. <laughs> Speak for yourself. Hey, cross reference uh, the data file with who's the commanding officer of the team I'm in. Oh no! Oh. <laughs> oh. Uh oh. Captain Julia Forrester. Oh. Mm. Yeah, Captain but, Julia Forrester. But 
You can roll insight uh, plus command, difficulty two, to notice something, some extra data in the file about the ship. Rolling 15. Um, That's all you do. Deception for a focus? Yes. I take a threat for the reroll. You say it was difficulty two? Yes. Is it assist on the ship? Uh, be computers plus command. I'm getting all the weird rolls out tonight. Jeez. <clears throat> oh, he's saving up so much threat. <laughs> it's not like I'm going to need them later or anything. Oh, uh, well, that's one thing. Oh, my God. <laughs> for the love of fridge oh. and magnets. <laughs> Ooh, uh, like else expedition might be able to come over. Where's a beach? Three float, is that right? Float. Two, oh. right? And, well. Ask all the questions. With a special commission, no less. Uh, I'm gonna give our uh, our node Cassie a uh, kismet permission so they can jump in. Oh yeah, sure, go for it. Um, so I have some float here. I'm gonna ask a couple questions. Sure. Uh, under what? Whose authority did this individual? Essentially, giving command of that ship to him. Who signed the paperwork? Also, if Cassie joined another uh, voice chat, we can drag them in. Yes. And this admiral is in charge of uh, what division in Starfleet? <laughs> yeah, not a black English. Where is this admiral currently at? I think that'd be the last free question. Goes for a float. have them in here, don't I? Yes. Makes my life easy. Although these stats are probably out of date like crazy. But... So Prax kind of leans in and reads and taps at the chair a bit, looking into the details of what's been discovered. Uh, you just kind of, after reading this data, she just slightly has a big sigh. Just kind of a face palm a little bit. Captain, is everything all right? Uh, um, this is it's not good, Doctor. Uh, how so? Someone who I thought was supposed to be in prison is apparently now in charge, you know, not a Starfleet officer, but in charge of one of the Kira class vessel. 
Wait, how does a non-Starfleet officer be put in command of uh, an Akira class? A special commission from a certain admiral in charge of this region. And Blackwell, this is something your character would know off the top. It, civilians in the TOS era, sometimes you'd have special commissions from the Federation Council, right. special assignments. That hasn't been used for like, in Blackwell's lifetime, that hasn't been a thing, except for like one or two instances. Most right. of the time, Starfleet captains can handle the job. Yeah, it would be it, like an instance that you could probably assume a, they, they do something like that would probably be for someone like Sarek. Yeah, right. Like, it would require someone of that caliber to be needed for the job. I think you're looking for the word infamy. <laughs> well, that can't bode well for anything. <laughs> no. change how we're going to have to proceed? Slightly, yes. Operate, um, ops, put me through to... Admiral uh, Jashuri, in my ready room. Doctor, if you would care to join me, I might need a witness for something. On my way, Captain. Oh, thank yeah. God we're going to have a security officer. And then oh, the scene officer. changed. No. I was about to say, Grennan. Don't talk shit about your own security guy. No, no, I'm glad that we have a security officer. I'm saying now, here's where my life gets interesting. <clears throat> Captain Grennan, Captain Kiddick, I would like each of you to roll for me one challenge die. This will change where people are. Oh, goodness. Always. All right. Captain Grennan, would you like to be somewhere cold or somewhere hot? <laughs> I don't like how that sounded. <laughs> oh no. I'm in danger. <laughs> I'm gonna go with somewhere cold. Okay. Q oh, no. in the vacuum of space. Yeah, the last time I remember Grenon being somewhere cold, it was a Klingon ice planet. And he almost got kidnapped, actually. Going to, going to Andor. He's going to Rurapen. Boy. Oh. Well, that's a lot of water. Beach episode. <laughs> Beach episode. No, I think this is On a planet. Somewhere in the galaxy. A world is covered in an eternal winter. Snow in all directions. On a planet that has not seen a summer for time immemorial. In the sky, dominating the horizon, is a massive gas giant. And the sun barely touches this small world. So, I hope everyone's a Andorian. Captain Grennan, I would like for you to roll for me Daring plus Khan as in the last moments of the kismet, as far as you're aware, you had to escape. There wasn't a lot of time. You had to find somewhere safe for the people in your escape pod. To wait any longer would endanger yourself and the 20 people inside. You're the one at the controls. You're the only one that can, make, that can do it. But you have to land. If you don't, you're going to go into that gas giant and everyone's coming with you. Oh, jeez. Way to put on the pressure! The difficulty is going to be. Th oh no, the captain's lying? Yep, because uh, everyone else is underqualified compared to him. I am going <laughs> to spend three momentum if that's okay. I'm going to start no. making a new character now. <laughs> <laughs> I have a few lined up. They'll be fine. I mean, GM, could I just create a quick advantage? Uh, unfortunately, no. Worth a go? Presumably, you're not on that. Okay. Gotcha, generating momentum. 
So that could have gone worse. Everything's so much chaos and shouting, calling for people to brace for impact, and then thud. You kind of feel like you basically face planted into the controls, and you kind of blink your eyes open. You can feel a breeze pressing against your face, and you can hear wind moving through trees. Oh, did someone get the license plate number of that escape pod? Ow. You turn and look over your shoulder. You're the only one moving. Uh. Apparently you were... Some people were in harnesses like you were for the crash. Uh, but the person who's flying is usually the most protected in crashes. So... You see uh. snow and blowing into the compartment. Oh god. Oh no. Oh no 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 no. I'm gonna go over to the people who are not moving. Daring plus medicine to find someone alive is difficulty five. On the plus side, if you fail, you won't get hurt. I'm gonna spend a, mom a, a momentum, just a single. Okay. Hmm. And you killed it. <laughs> you found one and immediately. You knew what to do. You put him down. Good job, Captain. Guys. I'll take that as threat. You search as best you can. You start pulling people over. You start trying to turn people, trying to make sure no, like, people, you get look at people's faces. And mercifully, you don't. Or maybe, sadly, you don't recognize... They're your crew, you know they are, but you couldn't give a name to any of these people. I mean, that's an ensign, that's a crewman. That guy helped with the EPS conduit once. Guess what's a big ship. You don't know everybody. Hundreds of people. The captain just sort of slumps against the bulkhead for a second, takes in a deep breath. And he's gonna <laughs> well. And realizing the situation he is in, um, he's gonna pick up the um, uh, he's gonna pick up what phasers he can find, knowing he's full well probably gonna have to use them to keep warm. You start gathering up some supplies, and thankfully, escape pods like this have uh, lots of supplies on a variety of planets, because, uh, well, that's what they're for. Captain, they're shooting through our shields. For a second, you hear a voice that you recognize, and you have a half memory of a lot of shouting and noise uh, on the bridge of the Kismet. And he pauses for a second, and he... Ooh, this is gonna hit some of you guys hard. This is gonna hit a couple of you hard. He just sort of rubs, you know, he crosses his arms, rubs them together, lets out a breath of cold air, looks out the window, thinks about the situation he's found himself in, and he just says, "What would Evans do?" Uh, you are able. Uh, you are able to secure yourself uh, your basic equipment, so your uniform, phaser, tricorder communicator um uh you are able to find basic uh traveling like a coat to put over yourself so you won't freeze immediately uh if you want anything more to dig up anything more useful than that uh you'll have to spend some of your opportunity or if you want a rifle that's going to cost you uh some threat uh i'm good okay you search the vessel uh well the compartment now what do you do? Well, I mean, this thing's got, um, how much life support does this thing have? I mean, I assume it'll be able to keep me warm for a little while, but, uh, 
I, I'm going to have to start scanning the horizon to see if there is anything, or if I'm just in the middle of a absolute uh, salt flat of a tundra with nothing in sight. I will tell you, you do seem to be an area that has a lot of trees. Oh, okay. So, But they're snow a... covered. Huh? Oh, uh, there's, okay. th Yeah. I think I winter trees. Evergreens and so on. Okay. Okay. That's... Better than, better than nothing. Um, it's gonna be difficult to build a fire with uh, snow-covered wood, but uh, I guess I'm gonna have to hopefully find shelter. Uh, I, I assume these escape pods aren't meant to function as as uh, long-term shelters in situations like this. Uh, you can actually give me uh, ins insight uh, security difficulty one. Uh, sure. Possibly actually get something out of this. <laughs> yeah, but uh, you remember it's... from uh, academy training that escape pods can be broken down and made into prefabs in emergencies. Well, that's about <laughs> that's uh that is better than nothing. You're also normally supposed to have more than one person survive the impact for that. Oh, yeah. That is true. Well, the good news is, if I can find somewhere close by to, to settle in, um, if I can find somewhere close by to settle in, I can always come back here and uh, get, get par more parts. Yeah. But I, I'm gonna need to find somewhere that'll that I can actually prop up, build a fire. So that's gonna be the the rough part. Uh, you said reason, science, difficulty four to find something. Yeah, as you're kind of scanning to see what the tricoder and scanning not just your local area, but as far out as your tricoder can manage. Uh, okay. It's just that the thing you're looking for is very far away from you right now. So that's why the difficulty is so high. Okay, uh, I will spend a single momentum. Okay. But that's it. Oh my god! Wow. I am... Uh, it's gonna be one of these nights. I'm glad I'm not on your shuttle. You do detect him. You do, you do indeed find something on uh, your uh, tricorder. Let me guess, it's a creature coming right for me. Oh, that would be too easy. Um, in fact, some distance away. Oh, no. <laughs> and time for another roll. Uh, let's see, we're going after... Uh, you're not there. Uh, Varder and Pend, please roll for me one challenge die, please. Oh. It's going to be such a mess. Pend, would you like to enter the scene, or would you rather Varder did? Uh, I would prefer to enter the scene. Cool. Awesome. You're not going to like how you enter the scene, because you came in because of a complication. Um... I mean, what's new? <laughs> <laughs> oh, they have him captain. Uh, you detect uh, a very familiar Tellarite signature at ex the extreme range of uh, the extreme range of your of your tricorder, and two. Yep, those are Romblia disruptors, and uh, on either side of them. They're somewhere in the forest, some distance from you. You've landed in amongst the forest. They, can't, they probably, although, whether they know you're here or not, uh, if they have a scanner looking for you, they might see you. <laughs> this thing's a big hunk of Federation material sitting in the middle of the woods. Okay. Okay, well, they're going to find this thing sooner or later. So, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to essentially hide myself. Not, not, oh, wait. Um, I've got an idea. 
for the moment that I'm going to keep my eyes on the scanner, I'm going to play dead. Pend, um, the most you remember was waking up, stepping out of your own pad, uh, pa your own pod. You had some time to organize some of the crew and get your pod settled. And then it was just disruptor fire and your whole ship was being over, was overrun. Um, you got some good shots in a lot of Romulans went down because you're, because between lucky for all of them, there was a lot of security officers in that pod plus you. So that turned out well for them. Uh, but at some point, there's just overwhelming numbers. Uh, the they, they, uh, pod got overrun. Next thing you wake, you're in manacles and you're being walked along in the middle of a, next to a tree line with two Romulans uh, walking you along on some ice planet. How armed do they look? Um, actually, you know what? What, uh, this guy behind you has a disruptor rifle. This guy in front of you has just has a pistol. Uh, does it look like we're moving in a specific direction? I seem to be heading this direction. To give you an idea, the more blue it gets, the thicker the woods get. Oh, okay, that's what that signifies. I would like to make bad choices. Well, that's just you playing, really. But... True. I'd like to take down one of the guards. Oh, God. Um, I'll you... note that you're in increased difficulty because you're manacled. Uh, who are you going after? I'm going after the... Do I still have my firearm, or does the guy with the pistol have my firearm? Um, you can roll for me inside security difficulty two to remember what happened. See if you can pick up the memory from your haze of being well injured. Uh, composure or sidearms? I'll give you composure. I'll spend a momentum. Okay. Get it back. It would appear some off, uh, some Romulan officer, none, of, none of the, neither of these two took it with them. Well, well and actually, guy. and put it on and, and replaced their disruptor. And went, oh, this is a nice pistol, and they kind of handed off their standard issue and took your weapon, and then walked off with it. Well, I think you remember entering a curse, but then again, you were face down in the snow, so maybe they heard you. I mean, I'd like to see how long that lasts for. Yeah, I'll take the guy with the rifle. Fair enough. Uh, suppose daring security, uh, you effectively he has one up on you. Yeah, that's fair. I mean, I you thought. Spend some momentum. Well, I'm gonna spend one for bold, so I can one secure. Uh, one secure. Yeah, one threat for bold. Can I take either intelligence operative or composure? Uh, for this first attack, you can get intel op. After that, it won't, it won't apply anymore. That's fair. Oh, shoot, I'm looking the wrong window entirely. Freaking, there we go. Uh, could I spend two momentum? I'd say so. Go for it. You know the right answer, Prax. <laughs> Screw off, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, my God. Da uh, daring, daring now is my lowest stat. Oh my god. Uh, that's so that and that, so I... I that, oh no. <laughs> well, you I mean... You just told me to stole my pistol. I'm not a happy guy. <laughs> yeah, I'll just buy two extra dice. I won't spend my whole threat pool on this. Oh my god. I like how you EMH are an ode. <laughs> One, two, three, four. So, against two six. successes. Ugh. One short. Gain a momentum. Roll your unarmed damage, please. If you get at least one effect, you can actually grab the rifle. 
Yeah, so this Does should get a plus be... for manacles? Uh, probably not. Say so again? This should roll, roll in six. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, sorry, uh, that should be Why one think... more. Can bite the guy's ear off. Just like... One second, I'm just going to roll another challenge dice. That should be one more. Yeah, can't win them all. You send him, you grab his rifle, you slam him in the face, and he just goes flying backward as you basically put all your body weight into the swing. So before you make an action, we're back mm -hmm. up to free momentum. Could I spend two of that and shoot the other, the other guard? Uh, you can. The difficulty increases yet again by one, so it's up by two. Uh, because you're in close... Oh, this... Oh, no. Uh, so... Base normally is two if you're in medium. You're in close. It goes up to three. It goes up one more because you have manacles. That's four. It goes up again because you're uh, swift tasking. That's five. Yep, that's fine. Okay, just wanted to make sure. I wanted to make sure you know where I'm from. Oh my god. Would you allow composure for this one? Yes. You also have, you also have sidearms. Yeah, I'm doing this with a rifle. Oh, that's right. It's not a sidearm. No, it's not. <laughs> trying to mention ten with a rifle down the side of his leg this is my pistol this is my sidearm my sidearm it's at my side what? fine hold it with one hand shut up so uh, automatically one threat to proc bolt oh yeah it becomes his new leg uh, <laughs> one more threat and the second and a momentum Gonna be something. I'm gonna re-roll that zero. So that's five. And Jesus Christ. Superstar. Um sorry. Um roll for me. Uh it should be your... nine. Oh my god. Or plus your security. Yes, yeah, so that should be another four ones. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's very quickly spin around, fire the disruptor at him, and thwomp. Doesn't even have a chance to turn around. Uh, get, Granny, you hear disruptor fire and commotion out in the out in the woods. Okay, I am running. As you start running over to Pend, the scene yep. changes. F phaser out. Phaser out. Please, that won't help you. Pend is gone feral now, Captain. I'm sorry, you're gone. Uh, is it this one? Yes. Oh. Oh. I like that noise. No. That's okay. We can go to somebody else. <laughs> Uh, you kind of. <laughs> so good. So you're sitting good. in the controls of a runabout. Hmm. Good. Great. You vaguely remember. Uh, you're sitting in one, in the quarters aboard the Tianan Men. And you're kind of waiting to see what the captain wanted, where he wanted you to go. You weren't really. You're just told to wait, and they'll figure out what they're going to do with you in the next couple of days. Because uh, you're not part of their crew, so they kind of have to fold you into their staff and all that. Um, and, you know, that's not too weird. I, you've been transferred before. Uh, that happens. And you're kind of waiting your turn out in your quarters, and uh, Adler walked in. Mm. And where is her token? There she is. Hello, Doctor. How are you settling in? I know you were apprehensive about coming forth. Oh, um, yeah. You shouldn't be here. Um, there are people we are getting very close to who want to interrogate you. I need to be here. But I get the feeling that if they get you, 
all hope is lost. So I need you to escape this vessel. Um. <laughs> Great. Lots of blinking. Um, do I? Oh no! I believe her. I believe her very much. You escape. And I suppose you have a plan for that? Yes. I will be able to get you as far as the runabout Amur for this vessel. Uh, my powers of deception I can extend to you. Uh, much as I would love to come with you, if I leave as well, we're bringing the entire TNM in with us, and that will hinder your escape. I have to stay here, so I'll be able to get you off the ship, but after that, you're largely on your own. And you'll have to figure your own way back to, well, she kind of just looks away for a second. Um, I would advise you go back to set course for Starbase 234. Because I don't think the Kismet or the Salamander has survived. It was a trap, Doctor. She kind of shuts her eyes and <clears throat> I guess I'll be able to clean her nose. Well, I suppose someone needs to Report. Indeed. In fact, Starfleet needs to know that what has been happening to the Cowcat within the Federation is going to happen to their world. A whole planet of red black Cowcat at the hands of someone who knows how that works. And the worst of it is, I don't know who you can trust. To save for the Midnight Watch. But even then, I don't know how confident you are in them. And I was told long ago that one is careful with giving trust so easily. I'm afraid. I think you're the only one I know. Get to get to the Weimar Future Corp on Earth. Oh, good one. Sorry. Wait, you cut out. I actually didn't hear. <laughs> the Weimar Future Corner on Earth. Uh, you'll be able to find well, rather, she takes out uh, she reaches into her clothes and pulls out a uh, badge, a brightly colored badge of the Midnight Watch. And for those who haven't seen that yet, I'll put that in there for you. Can you spell that for me so I can put it in my notes? Thank you. Wear that openly at where it once was, and someone of the watch will find you. I suppose I thank you. Don't thank me yet. You still have to get back to friendly space. Last I checked of the sensor logs were smack in the middle of Klingon and Romulan space, so Oh good. Oh good. Yeah. And they're shooting at each other. Basic, so basic flying, right? Um so very good at flying things. <laughs> well here's the thing, Doctor. She hold. She kind of reaches for your sh your shoulder. You are, and you have this 
weird sense that, yeah, you are. I mean, there's all kinds of classes you took. These are memories you're not very familiar with, but you have this distinct memory of going, learning how to fly, and uh, in effect, your uh, con is five. Holy oh. shit. <laughs> oh, damn. <laughs> Well, uh, we should probably leave before uh, Star X figures out what I'm up to. Steph looks a little dazed and kind of like shakes her head. Yes. Um, is there anything I can leave you with? Anything I can do to help you? If you meet the Command Knight Captain, tell him that he was right. That's all you can do for me at this point. All right. Let's do this. And you remember that, con and that conversation kind of comes back to you, and you kind of, you've been in this runabout for a while, for several hours now. Uh, you've managed to avoid detection, but between all the shooting that's been happening between Klingon and Romulan ships, uh, sensor data in the areas and the interference they've been throwing out, it's garbled a lot of your sensors and your navigations. You're kind of guessing where you need to go. It's like a tried old fashioned way. Stares out and tries to see if she can distinguish stars. <laughs> uh, give me uh, insight con where are you trying to get to um, shit. she told me to go to try for starbase 234 first is that it yep and then Earth after uh, we'll that. make that difficulty of duh and duh difficulty of four if something tells me I wouldn't be able to on this thing. <clears throat> Difficulty what? Four. Don't think I have focus, but, you know, my, uh... My score isn't too bad. Uh, just be well confident all the time you see pen fly. Let's learn how to fly, shall we? What was the difficulty for? Yeah. Yeah. Nope. That didn't work. You look but out. I didn't, I didn't give myself a headache, so, you know. Yeah, you look at the stars, they're too unfamiliar. You're too far away from stars, you recognize. Even with your long life, you haven't been in this corridor before, so you haven't, mm -hmm. and you also haven't had to do it by eye before. Nope. Um, yes. Uh, it's going to be a, po your, a poll of mm -hmm. your reason science, assisted by uh, the runabout's sensors aren't great so i wouldn't depend on no. it yeah and i'll be rolling for the ship that was throwing out interference to see how well they did uh, i don't think i'm quite ready to spend that yet i am not telling anybody to do it but myself so doctor's orders don't apply no. <laughs> all right this is the same role as last time, almost. So uh, what's the role you have to make? It's an opposed. <clears throat> but this one's Reason Science, which is currently the same as my Insight, insight Con. Oops, I should probably pull up the stats for the runabout as because well. Because really Adler convinced me I knew how to fly. And it's amazing what you can get convinced of. So... Efrix, what you're saying is, you believe you can fly. She believes yeah, she yes. can touch the sky. God, I hate you Oh, all. no, I was going to go. I can fly, I can fly, I can fly. And your ship gives you sensors plus Because I can't think of happy thoughts right now. 
Haha! -ha. Oh, hey, it helped. <laughs> it actually helped. And now the bad guys roll. Sorry, they're not bad. That's that's unfair. <laughs> they just think they're they just think they're the good guys. Yeah, that was just a Romulan slip. Oh my god. <laughs> Uh, surprisingly, uh, uh, you gain two momentum, and uh, apparently, uh, by sheer chance, you happen to wake up as it were. Uh, they didn't cover this area with interference. You can see perfectly fine. I, uh, I use the old Fonzie method. <laughs> hey. They were squiggly, so I think, hey. Uh, sensors seem to say that you're within, uh, you're in the same sector that once was, but you're on the Romulan side of the neutral zone. Okay. And you're near a star system. Ooh, okay. Let's avoid that. That's a problem. Yep. So uh, but I... yeah, you have full faculty of the control of your uh, runabout. You can see wherever you want to go. Runabout's okay. functioning normally now. So I want to avoid that star system very much. Thank you. Okay. And try to navigate my way back to the start of the thing. So you're going to set course to warp back to uh, friendly space? Yes. Do, do. And the scene ends as you start to warp. You start moving forward, the stars start flowing by you. You get the sense of comfort of knowing that you're heading home. And Actually, heck, you're not even that, all that far away. And then all of a sudden, everything crawls to a stop. You can hear the warp engine just roaring away at you. Oh, and then no. you seem to go hard it. reverse. Oh, no. Who's got you in its tractor beam? Yeah, I cut it because I don't want to build it. You cut the warp engine, and you notice the stars keep going by you like you're at warp. Oh, no. This is good. This is great. Yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> good. Good times. New scene. Oh, and Arno is now on the bridge. Do do. -do. Arno, Cassie. Yep. Lieutenant still? Yes. Okay. So you step onto the bridge as the expedition is in its, uh, you know, so, oh, oh, wait, actually, you step onto the bridge. Uh, no one's there yet. <laughs> You're the senior officer uh, there. Uh, sure. Uh, I'll, uh, I guess, uh, take a position on the, uh, as watch officer, unless there's someone else already standing watch. Uh, it's a lieutenant junior. It's more appropriate that you're standing watch than they are. Okay. Uh, anything you wish to ask about the map? Because uh, your character can ask yeah. updates of the NPC crew, because you, your character was just wasn't on the bridge the last few minutes. Right. Uh, so uh, I kind of miss our, our original briefing here. Uh, so, uh, are we responding to, like, a distress signal here from the Kismet, or...? Uh, in effect, the uh, the Kismet, along with the Salamander, went missing, um, and you are, you're now in the coordinates where they were last seen by right. the nearest starbase. It's not so much as a distress call, it's the fact that the Admiralty realized that when the ship went missing, uh, the Salamander is holding on to what amounts to a whole race of people that have been enslaved, and they were being taken home, and now they're gone. And we can't account for them. So they went, hey, Expedition, get over there. Find out what's wrong. Like, now. Cool, so we're searching for them. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And uh, these here are like the um, uh, sh uh, remnant si ship signatures. So those aren't actually the ships. Okay. Um, uh, Helm, take us toward the uh, remnant ship signatures. And we can see if we can get a, a lock on where... Uh, uh, where they, uh, the trails may uh, take us. 
Uh, which ship do you focus on? Uh, so the, you said the salamander was the one with the 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 race on it, right? Uh, Calcut crystals. The Calcut crystals, right? Okay. Um, I would uh, suggest then that that would be priority one. Uh, now you can either roll uh, the reason plus uh, science roll yourself. Or uh, the expedition for the, on this sheet, I have it as a NPC roller, so you can actually roll for the talented crew under you, since you guys are crossing over to us. Okay, uh, I will uh, have a science officer definitely <laughs> do that one. <laughs> and we're going to call this diff... difficulty of three. This is the ship sensor sign. So difficulty two. Oh my god, there's so many character sheets in this one. All right. Uh, so so how do I roll for uh it's the ship's NPCs? I don't think of the oh, crew task roll. I see. Yep. Yeah. Cool. <clears throat> uh is focus used? Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, okay. It's always assumed the most uh, qualified person is doing it. Okay. Uh, perfect. Well, I mean, that's well. a big assumption with player ships, but you know. <laughs> uh, oh, that's it. two. <laughs> that does it. Uh, it would appear that the Kismet went this way, as if it was heading back to Federation space. Uh, he was asking about the salamander. Well, it was going this way. There's your bonus information, because uh, yeah. I rolled a complication for myself. Uh, the salamander went this way, as if it was continuing on course. And you said the, uh, the kismet went uh, s uh, sort of this way? Yep. Okay. Uh, so, so where is the uh, the captain at this point? Uh, someone mentions to you that she's in the ready room right now, taking a call with an admiral. Okay. Um, so, as not to disturb her, uh, I believe that it would be the captain's wishes to head in the direction of the salamander. Do you wish us to set course for that, or do you want us to wait on the cap? Um, I'll just. Uh... Click my com badge, I suppose. Uh, KC to uh, Captain Prex. I'm assuming that uh, this, this is during an important... Uh, you're still waiting for the, whatever functionary you got to hook you up with the Admiral to connect you. You're sitting at a hold screen for the last, like, hour. Elevators, elevator music playing. Make it quick, Lieutenant. Uh, we have tracked the what we think are the approximate directions of both the salamander and the kismet. Uh, they seem to be have, heading in opposite directions. Uh, which ship should we pursue? Hold position for the moment. Um, see if you can't get a bearing where the Tiananmen went to. Yes, sir. And we'll actually, and actually, at that moment. Uh, someone appears on screen before in Prax's uh, ready room, and Blackwell's in there as well, as I recall. To witness, I think it was. Yep. Hello, I am the current li fleet liaison between uh, the special operations and the rest of the fleet. Uh, I'm as close as you're going to get to the Admiral at this point, Captain, and unless you want to wait for another 24 hours, so... How where, can is the, where is the Admiral, and what rank are they? I can see. Uh, this person seems to be wearing uh, oh, civ uh, civil clothes. Mm -hmm. But you can see, like, a little pin on their outfit indicating that they're a Federation functionary of some kind. Like a civilian auxiliary that helps manage day-to-day -day operations with Starfleet, like... A very uh, well-placed secretary, let's put it that way. 
And your name is? A Tazeric. Tazeric, yes. yes. I need to speak the Admiral Pronto. Okay, the... clearance code, please. He takes out a pad, starts getting types at it to get it active, and looks up at you. Since when do you have to have a clearance code to speak to an admiral on a priority one mission? Are you with Special Operations, Captain Prax? I must have mistaken you. No, Otherwise, I'm, you require I'm conducting an investigation, and apparently, your so-called boss is at the center of all of this. I will let you speak to her right away. Uh, you can attempt for me uh, presence plus command, uh, difficulty of two. Persuasion for a focus? Yes. Take <laughs> uh, a threat. Sure. Have your three oh, momentum. <laughs> oh. <sighs> the sadness in your voice. So, to be quite honest with you, Captain Prax, um, we don't know. You don't know where a Starfleet Admiral is currently at? <clears throat> uh, yes. And where was her last known location? Oh, Surely no. you must know that. Uh, I do. I do know that. Ha <laughs> ha. He starts, you hear him rifling through. You can see him as he starts madly dashing across what is presumably not his desk. <laughs> it's like he took someone's call in her op. Um, because his office isn't nearly as impressive and less <laughs> intimidating. Um, Ah, here it is. Uh, embarked from Starbase 12 en route to the Celeste system. Uh, however, she never, uh, according to our records, she never embarked on another ship. And she has not been seen in any neighboring bases or ships. Um, and we checked with, and before you ask, Captain, we did check with the authorities on Celeste and Believe me, they would have noticed a Starfleet Admiral walking around a civilian uh, installation. Uh, Captain. <clears throat> Ma'am. Sir? What ship was she on? Um. Let's see. It was, uh. Let me think, uh. Um, sorry, I think this is, uh, well, maybe your code can clear it. I'll send you the file. I can't, my code isn't getting it, but maybe you're cleared for it. And he sends the message over subspace and you get an encrypted file asking for a clearance code. And it's marked with a seal of Starfleet intelligence. Oh no. God, I hope it's not her. Thank you. Oh. Sorry, I can't be more help. Normally, we know her every move, but... And one of her ships that's under her detachment, the USS Tiananmen, are you currently aware of its whereabouts? Yes, uh, that I know. Uh, let me pull up the map here. Okay, let's see. No, it's not there. It moved. All right. It was last seen uh, approaching Starbase 123. They seem to be en route to Narendra Station. And is Lord Roland Stark still in command of that vessel? Lord? Oh, right, that. Right, right, right. That's the commission. That's right. Uh, yes. Lord Headass. <laughs> thank you. That will be it. Oh, thank God. And he cuts the connection. Hmm. Lord Starex? Blackwell says after the connection is cut. <laughs> he is a member of one of the houses of Betazoid. Apparently he was 
an heir or close to the main center family or at least his family line from what I remember Blackwell so just kind of... he should still be on uh, New Guinea serving Zealand. his time Z uh, New Zealand Blackwell stops in mid eye roll serving his time <laughs> he was court martialed for disobeying the orders from a certain admiral at Narendra Admiral Hepper's order From my understanding, I was not present for the incident, but it was a rather circus uh, events thing. All right, Captain, we're uh, we're fishing in waters way over my head here, um, and this Admiral Shishish career. God damn it! <laughs> Fuck! I said it earlier, so no one caught it. Um, I think I leave you guys in suspense. Um, yeah, I couldn't remember exactly what I said, then I couldn't figure out how to pronounce it properly. Don't Shish worry, I don't either. She 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 Yeah, that's why we just call it Azalon. <laughs> so this Admiral Amdorian Shishkebab. Um, who is this? Uh, she was the one that gave. The team, uh, commission for uh, or for um, former Captain Star X um, for the team on in, and apparently Starfleet intelligence, and she's apparently part of Starfleet intelligence. Whew. which is an irony in itself, considering uh, Cap or former Captain Star X's position on Starfleet intelligence, how he has a deep seated hatred. And yet he's apparently been appointed commissioner, which, as far as I'm aware of Starfleet, hasn't done in... Certainly when I, since I've been in service. It's highly unusual, which means he's a pawn in some sort of larger game. Someone they can easily throw away, more than likely. Hmm. that I don't like at all bad enough everything else we have to face out here without our own people trying to get us killed and uh, Prax is going to turn around and try to open the encrypted file on a secure pad that's not within the ship's system networked it's not network. Uh, just a moment. Nope, no, those are working. Cool. Um, that's weird. Uh, give me, um, uh, control command or control security, uh, difficulty of one. Because of your rank and what ship you're aboard. Yeah, I don't think I have a focus for this, so. Uh, take a threat for the reroll. Sure. Oh, yeah, it failed. <laughs> so good. Um, you open up the file and you discover that the scene has ended. Sorry, what? Uh, the scene has ended. <laughs> you the scene, the scene that has ended. Oh, okay. <laughs> Just says it in bold letters. Um, but yes, I'll type out the information as we cut away. It says it right here. In four different languages. What the heck?
We cut back to Captain Grin and Phaser out running toward Pend, who has a disrupt and two dead Romulans on either side of him. I mean, if I see someone charging at me, I might just wing him. Oh, I have to. Give me uh, insight security difficulty of two. <laughs> um, to see if you jump at movement and fire at it, because there might be a bunch of Romulans out here trying to kill you. Composure? Yeah. I'll, I'll just roll this straight. I mean, I would. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> you turn, you give yourself an extra beat to actually get a like get whatever it is in your sight picture and oh hey it's granite can I just whistle one past his head yeah disruptor bolt just uh, burns through the air past your head granite it's a tree tree falls over oh thank god captain puts down his phaser oh, what are you doing here Set down the escape pod about how how far would I say like a couple hundred yards? Uh, two hundred, three hundred yards, yeah. <sighs> escape pod crashed a couple hundred yards away from here. Uh, I'm the only one who made it out. Well, clearly he wasn't as lucky as me then. Yeah, what's um. Looks like you had some company. Well, we managed to get down, but the people who survived, we were overrun by this looks at both of the Romulans by seemingly overwhelming numbers. Captain nods, uh, walks over to uh, this fella here, picks up the disruptor pistol. Uh, do you mind if I can borrow your phaser for a second? <sighs> sure, uh, follow me, I'll bring you back to the escape pod. I uh, should be able to get an extra there. I know, I just want to shoot the chain. Oh? Yeah. And he hands over the phaser. I'm going to attempt to break the shackles by shooting the chain. Oh, uh, yes. Um, give me a uh, control... Uh, security difficulty of two, because you're kind of you're kind of have to crane your uh, wrist around to kind of shoot without hitting yourself. I mean, considering I'm doing this with a phaser sidearms. Yeah, I'll give it to you. I don't think I'll spend for this one. Uh, roll damage. On chains. On oh, phaser, you're shooting with the phaser. Uh, I'll roll the particle magnum. Just take one off it. Sure. Yeah. You, fa <laughs> you, you aim the phaser down, and it, you're able to carve the uh, manacles free. Okay. Well, they were taking me south, but I know they had a contingency to the north where they've got some prisoners. Alive then. Uh, were they alive, GM? Or was that a misspeak? You're not sure. The battle. You knew there was a bunch. There was thirty some of you at the beginning of the, and you're by yourself when you came to. Well, they were there. Whether they're still there is a different matter. Right. Well. I don't think we're going to get anywhere by just standing around. So, head north, north or south. Personally, I want to go north because one of those bastards stole my gun. Hmm. Captain's gonna keep an eye out. 
Are you okay there? Walked right into it. Well, no shit. The joys of working with people on, on the darker end of the scale. All for that. Well, you, you can consider this your lucky day in some respects. Captain just lets out a big sigh. I mean, you're stranded on this lovely resort planet with someone who's been behind enemy lines before. <laughs> Only you would call this a resort. I mean, I've seen worse. It's just cold. It's not even that cold compared to Andoria. Right, right. Is the, uh, I guess as we're walking, does the captain spot anything? Uh, what are you looking for? Uh, just anything out of the norm. Uh, I mean, all we have seen so far, I mean, other than these two Romulans, is just, um, uh, what's it? Uh, ice and trees. Uh, actually, what I'll do for you, I'll actually give this, I'll call this a reason science role, a uh, difficulty of one, to identify the type of world you're on. Okay, um... Oh, I'm guessing that's why we're going down in momentum, Praxis asking questions. Yes. Right, uh, that's... Uh, what, uh, what's your reason science pen? One second. A total of ten. Mine is better than yours by one, so I'll be rolling it. Let's do it. Oh my god. Two momentum. Uh, this would appear to be a class M world that's in the... Well, actually, no. You think about it for a second, you think about the gas giant overhead. You're probably on a moon. But it's not cold enough. Penn had, uh, Pen had the right idea. This isn't a class uh, P world, but it, which is basically a glacier world. This is a world, an M-class world that's in the midst of an ice age. So okay. there is life here. The air is breathable and stuff like that. So as long as we uh, find ways to keep warm, hopefully this is an ecosystem that'll provide us with enough sustenance to, you know, just help healthy until hope arrives it's coming or and you hear hope... in the distance you hear phaser fire it, deep in the woods if we live that long uh pen's gonna head off captain yep that like that 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 was like the cue i was giving it's like if we live that long and we're running off towards the phaser fire uh, i would have handed him back his phaser while i've got the disruptor rifle That that means I've got a I've got a uh, phaser uh, phaser uh, type two phaser and a disruptor pistol. Hey, hey Varder, I got a question for you. Yeah. Uh, if you were suddenly approached by a bunch of unfamiliar aliens that uh, that look like um how do I describe this? that look like blue jellies with spears and oh spears no i'll put it that uh as they approached you like what would you do uh spears yes yeah, so they're it's like it's kind of stuck in them but they kind of warble and move closer towards you uh how half lowered phaser because i'm assuming that wouldn't look threatening to someone with a stick who knows what a stick looks threatening pointing down is not threatening they 
if they've got sticks, they can't be the ones that shot us down, is my thought process here, so. That's neat. So, uh, you move your hand down, you kind of look at your hand, and you feel that there's no weight in your hand. You kind of glance down, like, wait, I should hold a, I should have a phaser in my hand. You look down, the phaser's gone. You look over, and you see one of the blobbies is kind of finagling or moving it. Well, rather, the phaser's kind of floating in it, and then it pokes out a little bit like the sticks do, and it fires a phaser shot overhead. I'll put you on the map now. <laughs> we now know Vardar wasn't the one who shot first. <laughs> it was the jellies. Vardar shot. This is the special edition where Varder doesn't shoot first. Oh man! Normally, I thought gets shot long. at. Rent did sorry, hired his bad word. Never mind. Uh, it was this one that had the phaser, by the way. Hmm. Uh, so in effect, uh, we are in combat because the jellies have managed to scare themselves. Um. No. <laughs> yeah. By, by her, oh, cool. oh god. Oh, I love them. Uh, they acted first, so Grenin, Pend, or Varder can act. I mean, I'm pretty sure I could drop all five of them. Uh, you're in effect at extreme range. You see there's movement down the phaser fire that went... Just as, you're just as likely to shoot Varder, honestly. Yeah. You'd have to move closer to get a better view. Uh, you two would have to get closer. <sighs> yeah, I'll, I'll move up. So what, mine are action move? Miner gets you into medium. Uh, you can see Varder. Can't quite see who he's facing right now because of all the tree cover. I'll shout out. Varder report. Uh, I think they're natives, Commander, and uh, they took my phaser. But, uh, it, yeah, I have no experience with this whatsoever. Can you can you retrieve it? I'll try. I'll uh, see if I can talk them down. I don't even know if they'll understand me. I'll I'll allow this as a direct from Pend to Varder, as the EXO presence. I try and talk them down. Uh, the whole group or just one of them, like the Phaser guy. Well, you see, I'm not the very best at talking down people, so I'd probably just talk down the That's phaser guy. Well, if it helps, <laughs> I will use my medal to give you a crit. So my oh, direct sweet. is automatically two successes. So you just have to get at least one success for that to matter. Oh, nice. um, the what? The difficulty is it's going to be... Hmm... I'm going to say four, because you can't... They, they don't speak a language you yet understand. Oh, yeah. There's going to be very gesture involved. Yeah. So well, maybe. hilariously, you have had that one course that was optional in Starfleet that teaches you how to t speak with species that don't have verbal. You you remember paying attention to it for a bit? Yeah, is that called psionically? Um... Oh, sorry. What was that? Okay, uh, what am I rolling anyway? <laughs> uh, presence plus security. Actually, it depends mm -hmm. what you're trying to get it to do. What do you want it to do? Um, not shoot me would be optimal. Uh, more or less, you know, I'm not your enemy kind of thing. Or not here to hurt you is probably more uh, apt for them. And then put that down before you hurt yourself. <laughs> Uh, presence. I'll give you presence, command, or security for that. <laughs> uh, all right. You already um, have two successes. Take a momentum. I do not have a weapon. Uh, uh, a focus. I do have a weapon. Uh, actually, not anymore. Um, <laughs> do not have a focus to apply to that. I don't believe lead by example would work because I don't have one to put down and demonstrate. Unless I pick up a rock and they might shoot me for picking up a rock. Uh, no focus. Yeah, I'll use a momentum for that. How does does that just complicate two free things for 
or do I have to spend to get the two free things? I don't know how that spend. Two free things, sorry? The, 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 the successes that he gets from the crit thing. Uh, in effect, his, he, he, his assist roll is automatically a one. Oh, okay. So uh, you have to get at least one success for that to fire. I'll give you get nothing. You a he can't threat, help. though. You will give me a threat because bold security is my thing. Uh, so I might as well. Oh, hey. never mind. That's one momentum. Um. Yeah. I can quick to action the captain. <laughs> Uh, actually, it's Pin's turn at the moment. He, uh, it's oh, Pin yeah. who directed you. True, true. Actually, he still has the phaser so far. But you get the feeling that uh, you communicated that as best as you think you can, really. Yeah, you get the feeling that the jelly doesn't look, look the red the jelly with the phaser in it doesn't look as agitated now. And the other four still are, but you know that one seems to have calmed down. Yeah, I did my best. <laughs> yeah, that's all I can do. I do wish to keep the initiative. Um, if we wanted, we can quit to action for either Grunin or Marder to go. Yeah. Keep quick to action, Grunin. Mm-hmm. Uh, how, uh, how hard would it be for me to get up to where Varder is? Uh, you'd have to do a task roll. Um, uh, it's difficulty zero, fitness plus um, security. Oh, sure. And if you get... And if, as long if you... Just rolling it gets you up to medium because you're, you're, it's assumed that you're moving. Uh, and for each momentum you spend after that, that's an additional range band that you travel. Right. Okay. Fitness security. No uh, focus. Okay. So you generate one momentum. Once you, and if you spend that one momentum, you can run right up to Varder. Yep. Will do. As you sprint through the woods. Pretty now we can both be stabbed. All right, Varder, let me take it from here. <sighs> and he looks over the uh, looks over the jellies and just thinks about um, how best to deal with a tribal uh, a tribal group. Uh, I've been taught this kind of thing in the academy is how to uh, diffuse situ uh, tense situations, but I'm so used to the uh, the people being able to understand me. But I know the. Uh, I know a lot of the uh, basic principles of de-escalation that, that don't require verbal communication, so I'm going to use those with hand gestures and the like. Uh, I try to sort of diffuse the rest of the group. Sure. Um, now, the base difficulty here is going to be four. However, uh, if since it, you had to use a task, you have to use your action to sprint, You'll have to spend uh, some momentum or threat to swift task, and that to because you're basically saying you're basically negotiating with them the moment you're done sprinting, or maybe even negotiating as you're sprinting. Uh, that brings the difficulty up to five. Okay, so here's how I am going to do this. Watch this. Um, uh, I am going. To, uh, I'm going to give the GM two threat. Thank you. Additionally, I am popping my uh, Palm Leaf of Zarconia Peace Mission Medal, which brings the difficulty down by one. When trying to defuse, uh, when trying to uh, defuse a violent situation. Yeah. Additionally, I have diffused the tension, which allows me to roll an additional die when attempting a task like this. I will then spend two more momentum to bring me up to four dice. Okay. So uh, all your momentum's gone because you had the swift task and then the two you just spent. Uh, I gave you two threat, remember? Uh, oh, yes. We did swift task. That was quick to action. But oh, he, he's now swift tasking. He's now swift tasking because he used his action to sprint. Now uh, he's trying okay. to do another action. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, I get what you're saying. That two, you, that two threat you gave me just now was to to cover the swift task. Okay. Yes, exactly. And I'm spending two momentum to get right. an, uh, to get a fourth die. So I'll steal those from you. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to. Uh, I assume my diplomacy focus comes into play. Yeah. Yeah. 
uh, presence command. Yes. It was a difficulty four, uh, and I get the two momentum back. Why is it diff four? Uh, because the I metal. Right, have, right. I've got my metal that lets me lower the difficulty. Right. Of tasks like this. Um, so yeah, no. Um, so those momentum stay. So uh, ignore my stealing attempts there, Prax. Um, yeah, you're able to make some gestures. Right, you run up very quickly. You, you very, it's sort of difficult to remain calm and move gently after you just sprinted across the forest. But you manage to kind of get the others. You communicate the idea that you and Varder aren't threatening or trying to do anything to them. So the jelly just kind of start warbling and then they kind of calm down. Uh, you're not in combat anymore. Okay. Oh. And I'm gonna try to make a sort of a gesture to indicate that um, the what what they took from uh, the phaser that they have is Varder's by like gesturing that this is mine and I point to that and like point to him like that's his the phaser just kind of plop and falls out in front of the uh, jelly <laughs> Aww. Well, oh, okay I'll just pick that up and holster it it is very sticky <laughs> okay. I'll wipe it on my pant leg first, then. <laughs> Although I will note that uh, when you pick up the phaser, it isn't cold at all. Like the jello seems to be uh, preventing it from being chilled. <laughs> Where are the slime people? Um, sorry, what? <laughs> Where are the slime people? <laughs> um, yeah, no, I didn't say anything. So I might actually, with that observation, uh, rub that slime off on my hands instead to keep warm hands. Or, you know, <laughs> take advantage of that situation. Uh, I want to try and figure out what exactly uh, what exactly this group of jellies is doing. Like, what they're... What, why are they here? What was I doing? <laughs> uh, you, uh, Varda, you had gotten separated from your uh, group because uh, you'd you guys had built a free uh, your prefab with your escape pod, uh, and you're basically looking or just scouting to find something, and you fell down. Uh, you got to a forest, got to a high point, and then you just kind of stumbled for a second, fell, slid on the snow for a moment, and then popped up, and then there was jellies. Okay. And actually, Varder, let's see how lucky you are. Give me uh, insight security, uh, difficulty uh, basis four. If you get three hits, I'll let you succeed at cost. All right. Uh, insight security. Uh, do I have a focus that applies to this? Something like observation, scouting, um, that sort of thing. Uh. I thought survival. I'll give it to you at complication. Uh, it's related. No, actually, no, I'll give it to you flat. I'll give it to you flat now that I think of it. Uh, <laughs> that sounds like exactly the sort security. Of thing. Uh, I'll throw you a threat for the bold. Before. Uh, you know, I should Maybe. throw you two momentum as well, just to. Yeah. Uh, I, I could re-roll that. I could re-roll that. Should I re-roll that? Yeah, go for it. <laughs> so yeah, we're at full. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Isn't that a floating? Uh, no, I don't think so. Because that's two, four, six, seven successes, and it was a difficulty five check, right? Or four. Four. four, yeah. So that's three. Mo oh, that is three momentum. We'll find out what the 
check was even for, then if there's anything that can be spent on. Oh, wait, yeah. Oh. Okay, the question. Did I happen to see a way up? Ah, uh, yes. You fell down it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, well, uh, the captain's in delicate negotiations, so, um, you know, I could oh, rain on his parade and all of that, but he's, I don't, don't want to be stabbed by a jelly. Unless there's nothing else we're doing there, in which case we'll tell you, uh, Grenon. The general sense you get, Grenon, is that they seem to be, uh, on patrol. It's hard to get more specific than that, because they can't, you can't get nuance out of them. Not without yeah. universe. Well, not without a linguist and uh, a lot of time with the trans with your combats, just listening to them warble. <laughs> oh. Actually, no, I'll tell Pen while that's going on because Pen has as much idea about what's going on as I do. So, Mitch would find this fascinating. Ah, uh, Commander. Yes, I saw something up on the mountain uh, near the summit that it could help us a lot. It could maybe save us. Any description of what it was? Uh, yeah, I wonder if I have a description of what it is. GM. Oh, or did, um, is it, this is one of my psychic premonitions again. Oh no, you did see something. Okay. Um... Oh, uh, oh, nacelles, uh, sir. Could you describe the nacelles? Basically, I want Bada to try and describe something so I can figure out what type of ship nacelles they're from. Uh, yeah, um... Do they look federation -y or not? Is I think the best you're going to get out of Varder. Yeah, oh, Varder... Pen's going to be assisting with this role. Varder's the lead because you kind of have to correct him if he says something that doesn't make sense in engineering terms. Like, that's not a thing in starships. Um, well, the reason why I was trying to go is because I've got a starship expert so I can identify types of starships. Hmm. You'd get that focus for assisting, but he's the one that's having to describe it to you. Well, that's a yeah. talent. Yeah. Uh, oh, you don't have the focus for it. You have a talent for it. Yeah, I've also uh... got the starship's focus as well, so that's like my... I can uh, when I see a ship. I can identify it. And we can just. Uh, you would generate one bonus momentum anyway, because you even on the assist, you'd still be able to uh, get that. Okay. Can we so, still see the summit, kind of? Um. Yeah, but when you look up, the trees block it. It's so thick. Oh, okay. You yeah, hit so a lot of trees on the distance. way down. Put it that way. Uh, okay. Okay, so let's let's see what I need to try and describe this. If not, it's going to be a follow me. We're going to say, ah, you know that you know this, you know ships in general. I'll give you a reason vaguely, con difficulty too. I vaguely know ships. This reminds me of um with the jellies. It reminds me of the opening of um Star Trek Into Darkness. You made me a little sad just then. Uh. I thought the opening to Into the Darkness what was What do you want me to use on this panda? I have a 12. You give like six threat. That sounds like a good idea. I mean, Sorry, you were asking panda. I said, I I'm only allowed to assist, but that's with a 14. So what, what are you comfortable with? Maybe mm. spend one for three dice and I can assist and maybe gain two momentum out of it? Sure. Yeah, that sounds reasonable. Because I sure as hell do not have a focus with this. Yeah. <laughs> What? Oh my god. They look like nacelles. <laughs> On a ship. That's fitting enough. I don't spend a lot of time looking at nacelles. Yeah. He gives you a description, but he's talking in such general terms that, geez, he could be talking about, like, uh, early warp species. That could be friggin' Bajoran. It could be you know, 
Cardassian. Oh. It's so general as to be not really helpful. Well, thank you, Mr. Varda. That was extremely helpful. <laughs> the more helpful thing is I know where and I know how to get back up there. I just fell down there. Well, the reason why I was asking, because if I knew, knew what type of ship it was, it would increase the chances of either A, flying it, or B, taking it over. What are they doing? They're warbling. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, either way, there we've got a prefab set up from our pod I love that. Uh, over that way as well. Well, I know like, we, from when mine got set up, it got overrun by Romulans. Um, so we've got Romulans to the north. Oh, well, this was to the south, I'm going to say. Let's see. Looks like we're coming from that opposite direction anyway. We could probably get back there, give them more of a heads up. We've already got some semblance of organization. Well, not some semblance, a very good semblance of organization going on. Well, you know how it is coming out of the crash. Well, I was planning on picking a fight to get my gun back. So maybe send the captain south to the prefab if you want to accompany me to pick a fight. To get your pistol back. Oh, actually, I just realized something, GM. Y'all. I have a linguistics focus. That would apply talking to these things, yeah. I mean, it's not over, only that, the overrun the, the crash site. Uh, where would, I was would, that, would that apply to the situation? Uh, well, you're scanning them. Are you scanning them to understand their language or are you understanding their biology? I'll start with uh, their biology, essentially to create the advantage. The advantage of? Just understanding their their function a bit more. I mean, it's it's kind of a thing that it, it probably would help in understanding their language to understand their biology first. How they make noises. That kind of makes sense, yeah. Wow, that... I just gave someone... I just dumped someone... Uh, oh, um, also, uh, hand. Your hand. Yeah. So, just gonna touch his hand with the slime. <laughs> Your hand is now sticky, but... Um, on the plus side, it isn't uh, cold anymore. Why did you goo me? <laughs> Phrasing for one, Commander. Um, at two, these creatures seem to have a uh, I don't know, natural resistance to the cold is the best way I can think of to phrase it off the top of my head. Well, Their goo's warm. Let's take into consideration they live here. <laughs> oh my god. Yes, but also they touched my phaser and now the phaser is it's very easy to acquire. And its effects seem very instant. I mean Oh, I, you got it, never mind. I'm fine, I'm used to the cold weather. But if you want to go diving into a, a gooey jelly being Sure, why it not? It was more to inform you, Commander. Uh, to answer the question, Grenon, uh, you discover that these are sentient blobs uh, that seem to, uh, as they move around and consume stuff, they generate uh, energy that keeps them warm, and their natural consistency makes them resilient against the cold. Um, Fascinating. And you get the general sense that from the scan as well and how they're wobbling, it does conform with pacifistic cultures. It's not a very aggressive growling or hissing noise. And oh, and you remember from a uh, uh, cultural studies class uh, that uh, usually when a jelly type uh, life form is hostile and it sees something that looks very unjelly like, it is very natural for them to want to eat them or attack them out of fear because you look hot, you look very alien and exotic and that can either be very interesting and intriguing or scary as all hell so thankfully these things didn't attack you on sight for being these ugly monstrosities of bone and meat <laughs> Aww. 
the jellies. We should move the captain along before he finds a slime girl. Uh, no! That! I mean, <laughs> we need to discuss what plan, what our plan is going to be, so I'll go fetch him. Uh, captain, a moment? Yes. Oh no. Uh, they follow after you as you move away. <laughs> well, okay. Then. I love it. Um, Mr. Bardis said he spotted a some ship nacelles on the mountain, and he's got a prefab set up to the south. I see. So, would you like to accompany Mr. Bardis south and maybe to that ship? Uh, that would be, um... And he just looks around again at the, the warblings. Focus, That'd Captain. Be great. <laughs> Come on, we can do this. Come on, Captain. I didn't think this is where this episode would be going, but I'm okay with it. This would have gone very differently if Barter shot them. I would have been very unhappy. <laughs> Listen, that's not the uh, Starfleet way. I know. I'm looking at somebody not on this ship. They didn't look <laughs> vaguely Cardassian, so that was fine. Yeah, so do you accompany Mr. Bada south and then maybe look into that ship? <sighs> Sounds like a plan. Well, I'm going to go look for survivors, but I know where to find you. Uh, Commander, that might sound like an idea for you to have at least someone else with you. Uh, considering I've just broke out of captivity, I'm sh sure I'm fine. I can't stop. I can't stop laughing. Just That's take the captain, he's distracted by gooey stuff. Or we could all go and then set that. out after he's there. No, I'd prefer to see what happened to the the camp I set up. There were a few of us still alive, but we were ambushed, so I want to make sure. More reason for you to not be alone. <laughs> I'll, I'll be fine, just make sure the captain gets to the prefab. Mm, grumbles. Yeah. And once there, he turns to... Uh, pen and he says I'll start coordinating things at the prefab if I find anyone I'll send them to you great and Sounds pen will like start walking off okay so the plan is pen is going where pen is going north to where his camp was to check for survivors okay, and to check for going. Romulans Grenin is going where with Varder to the prefab site. Okay, so you're actually going over it this way, more or less. Okay, cool. Uh, we'll cut to a new scene now that I know where you're... Um, just want to make sure. I don't want to... Uh, I have a habit sometimes of assuming where people are going. It's like, whoops, that's not what you meant. Sorry. You didn't want to jump into the fat full of acid? Oh, well, you should have told me. We did. We talked for like an hour. <laughs> we yeah. specifically said we didn't want to jump into the fat of acid. Well, okay then. Ah, yes. <laughs> Where'd I put it? Oh, what is... This I assume is... this is the hot... Uh, the runabout lands on oh. what looks to be on the other side, uh, on a... Uh, world that looks very much red and orange with dust wind, uh, dust blowing everywhere and you're actually getting an environment warning that it is very hot outside of the oh, runabout okay. right now Good. uh can i figure out where i am and all your instruments go dead mm, they good. blink off good <laughs> oh great 
is fine. <laughs> How hot? Uh, you can f- now that the shuttle has shut off completely, you can feel heat radiating from bulkheads around you. Uh, do I have an environmental suit? I quickly look around and find some uh, what amounts to desert gear. Good. Hey, it's like she knew. Hold on. Oh, she's sitting in an oven. Take the, the gear I have and. Um, or is like my, my personal equipment working? Like, can I can I try a tricorder? You flip your tricorder on. It does blink on. Can I get a reading on temperature? Uh, reason plus science. Difficulty of one. Okay, then. I look at the readings. Uh, uh, yeah. The, it's fluctuating. The heat seems to be fluctuating wildly, and it's either so hot that the deck plate should be melting, or it's just a summer day out on Earth. Yeah. Something's probably interfering with your sensor readings. Or you're just not reading the uh, readings correctly, but the first one's more likely than the than the latter. I'm holding the tricorder upside down. No. Uh-huh. Oh. It's only gonna get harder here. Or I guess I'm going to find out. Oh, I guess maybe scan for life signs. If there's other things alive, maybe that's. Like... Uh, give me reason plus medicine difficulty of um difficulty of four succeed at cost with three uh xenobiology yeah this is because of distance as a note okay um and I'm going to send a momentum so I can look in the case of catastrophe. Uh, you said six. It's a four. Yes. Okay. Oh, three at uh, cost. Uh, sure. Oops, works better if you can see it. All right. Uh, you detect a lot of life forms, and actually, from that sense of reading, you, that looks like a Miranda class ship it has a bunch of people on it, but they don't seem to be moving around or anything. But you see life signs; they're all the way up on the mountain. On something all right I'm gonna open the door and pray I don't instantly burn to cinders uh fitness plus security difficulty of one because you have oh, the proper I'm gear so, on I'm so, what uh, super good at this uh Uh... 
the eternal I thinking noise. There, <laughs> I don't suppose there's any way I could make an argument for xenoimmunology because I know how the, the body reacts to heat. Add complication. Uh, on the basis that you probably started injecting yourself with stuff to try to make yourself more resilient. I'm already at a nine. <laughs> no? Get it. Congrats. That could have gone a lot worse. Hey, that's better than when I was rolling with your NPC character that was good at that sort of role. Where's your thing? There you are. You step out. You're huge. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> there you go. You step out and you get... you. It's not so much the heat. I mean, the heat's terrible. And thankfully, the suit seems to be uh, helping you uh, stay hydrated. And it's shielding you a lot from the heat. And you feel sort of it, the suit kind of catching the breeze a little bit. Um, so your suit almost billows as you're wearing it. Um, it's the it's the dust storms, and you just yeah. get you kind of have to shield your face your face so you don't get and you can feel a searing pain along your arm along your palms that are exposed, and it's like oh, wow, uh, if you mm -hmm. were just wearing your regular uniform that would have shredded you. Uh, this armor's yeah, this, yeah. Uh, on the plus side, it, uh, you can ballpark say that this is probably hazardous rather than deadly because otherwise uh, you'd be cooking where you're standing. So. Yeah. Um, it's somewhere in the uh, 50 centigrade uh, area. Give you an idea of heat. Jesus, that's oh. hot. Yeah. Yeah. It is I'm unpleasant. From Arizona. That's that's summer. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> you get you see what I mean. It's like it's hot, and that's not great. But it's the it's the dust that's blowing so darn hard. Yeah, that's really the no, issue. Yeah. I mean, if that's it's... Celsius, that's incredibly hot. Yeah. 122. I've, I've marched in that weather before. Yeah. Um. It's not fun. I wouldn't recommend it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but I've done it. Uh, and actually, right, as, you're, guess... as you're standing outside of the runabout, you can actually see on top of the mountain. It looks like this Mor Miranda class ship it ended on a plateau at the top of the mountain. Mm -hmm. Guess I'm gonna start hiking. Uh, are you going at a steady pace, or are you trying to get up there quickly? That's a it is. That's why I asked. So the life signs. The life signs weren't active. They weren't moving. Yeah. Um, for a momentum, I can give you detail. Okay. Well, momentum gone. Um. It would appear they are in stasis. Mm -hmm. Except they're not in stasis pods. They're like spread out across the ship. And Miranda's aren't exactly stocked with a ton of these things normally. Oh, oh nope. I know exactly what. Okay. Um, because I've seen it before with the top head. Um, all right. Um, yeah, I'll push myself. Here we go. Uh, fitness plus security. Difficulty of. Well, it's really dusty today. Difficulty of three. Okay. Wait, what the? You silly thing. Keep playing. Maybe determination? Yeah. There we go. Uh, I was going to pop a... Uh, I'm a... Oh, man. I'm trying to think of a good one. I'm a, I'm a doctor, not a sprinter. Well, I was going to go with I'm, I'm a doctor, not Lawrence of Arabia. But <laughs> she wouldn't know that. That reference. Yeah. What are you talking about? That's required watching at the academy. No, I mean, that's probably re required oh, watching yeah. for Brennan. I'm, I'm looking at that <laughs> I, I can see where you just used the magic wand tool and deleted sections of the ship. Um, all right. 
Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna pop. I'm a I'm a docker. Okay. Um, because, yeah. Um, which means that I can now use cautious. So I'm going to spend for cautious. Okay. Good thing I did. Well. And I can't spend animation, so. Cool. On the plus side, this won't hurt too bad. Mm, good. Great. Good times. Whoops. Oh, yeah. uh, not correct. Oh, good. Because I was going to uh, say. You suffer three stress from the. as you uh, make your way there. Mm hmm. As you're able to, as you manage to climb your way up to the plateau where the Miranda class is, it seems to tower over you. Uh, you can see a massive, at the bottom, at the other side of the hill, of the hill, the mountain range, mm -hmm. see this big black circle with glowing lights that seem to fire up, uh, that seem to just, uh, like, like, think magic circles on the ground. Uh, with this sort of uh, eldritch glow to them. And surrounded in one of them, encased in it like amber, is a person you've met before. Although they aren't in stasis, they're uh, very much awake and aware of their current situation. Kiddick! I have some complaints. It's very warm. <laughs> oh my god. I'd like to speak to the manager. <laughs> I would actually like to speak to the manager. Um, so, Efrix, do you go down to see how Kidig is doing, or do you investigate the ship? Hmm. Can I get a better reading now that I'm close? Uh, There's, you can. Uh, um, what's going on on the ship? Like, what kind of life signs I'm seeing? Is it is it the crew? Is it the cowcat? Oh, uh, you can roll for your reason, medicine, difficulty of one, now that you're so close. Uh, xenobiology or non-carbon-based life form? I'll give you xenobiology. Gain one momentum. Um, yeah, Efrix, you detect it seems they are... There's no cow cat involved. It's as if someone encased every single person aboard the ship in a stasis pod. But you don't detect any instrumentation that's doing it. There's no, uh, there's no device around them. But you see the energy signatures. You see what would be the fields that would be used to keep a person in stasis. And it looks like they've been like this for a long time. Maybe a day or uh, more. Currently, they're not in trouble. Um, so I guess I'll hike back down the other side of the mountain. And as Ifrik starts making her way to you, uh, Kiddick, uh, you don't remember a lot. You remember following the TNN men. You remember some hours passing. And then you were being shot. Ouch. Um, you brought up the shields, because that makes total sense. When you're being shot at it. And they, the net following shots went clean through your shields like they weren't even up at all. And the following hits were quantum torpedoes, and that crippled your ship. Rude. In an effort to save the ship, uh, your crew warped away. Because uh, the thing that was shooting at you was a Tina Min. Um, I, I told you so, Grenon. I 
fucking told you so. And there's the F-bomb for this week. <laughs> um, eventually, the miraculously, somehow you escaped. They didn't chase you, or your con officer pulled some stunt that they didn't really understand. And next thing you knew, the ship was uh, landing on a planet. I must have blacked out for a second there. Did we just land? Yeah, you just, your crew was like madly trying to get the ship to stop what it's doing, and then it just very gently just plunked itself on top of a mountain. Okay. Your, your entire crew, you try to get answers from your crew to like, what are you doing? You know, standard stuff that anyone would ask of their crew, and uh, they just froze in place. Kept asking questions and probably, I imagine, went to an instrument at some point, and then boop. You are in this weird circle encased in this yellow field. But I'm going to ask you for an insight security check, difficulty two. You remember something very important happened when you tried to leave. Does uh, Starfleet protocols, extravehicular activities, or uh, geology apply in this case? Maybe survive. Survive, I'll give you, actually. No. You've been, you recall, you recall standing here for hours on end. And you've kind of been, for some reason, you don't remember why leaving this field is a bad idea. You just remember it was. But then again, you haven't slept, <laughs> you haven't had a chance to lay down, and this planet is, blows nothing but dust, and you can see your ship just up there. And just then you can see Efrix coming down the mountain, jogging over to your position. The, the instinct is, do not come too close. Uh gesturing wildly do not come too close uh, and essentially just wanting to collapse but does not because it would be un unbecoming of a Starfleet officer I mean if you're gonna collapse in front of anybody the doctor would probably be ideal yes Captain? Doctor? Does she hear me? Yep. I am not sure how I got here. This is very strange. I have been standing for hours. I'm sorry, I didn't catch what you said. I didn't say anything. Uh, have you tried to leave? My gut feeling says it's a bad idea, and my memories say that it's a bad idea as well, but I can't recall where they're from. Have you gotten any read on the force field? A read? I don't think I carry a... Uh... Hold on. Um, I'm gonna search for a tricorder. If I carry one, I don't think I do. Uh, yeah, you do. You... Huh. And I'd like to scan the field, please. You reach up your hand. It's gone. Hmm. Kind of figured. What are your readings, Doctor? Let's find out. They will be better than mine, I I assure you. And the tricorder pops out of existence. With a snap, which I won't clap again because it's probably hard on some people's earbuds, I just realized. <laughs> Fine for me. Uh, I have the distinct feeling that either someone's messing with us or, well, this isn't real. 
actually have experience to that before. I very much hope that this isn't real. Right. Okay. Uh, so let's think really hard of someplace cold and much less windy. There is no place like home, I suppose, the humans would say. Unless I did, I'm at a bit of a loss. Well, it's a... Uh, it's an old uh, Earth uh, classic, eh? Oh, no. Grinnan talks about that, that one quite often. I talk, but I do not speak my mind. I hear words, but I do not listen to thoughts. When I wake, all see me. When I sleep, all hear me. Many heads are on my shoulders. Many hands are at my feet. The strongest steel cannot break my visage, but the softest whisper can destroy me. The quietest whimper can be heard. Tell me, my dear friends, what am I? This is very unnerving. Any guesses, Doctor? Can you repeat it again? It is in the Discord. I will save you from my okay. uh, performance. <laughs> and I should put in roll 20 because of who are from that angle as well. So. Out of character, I think it's, um, I think it's borrow, but there's a, <laughs> I, I might be wrong. I think you're wrong. Um. Would the GM allow an insight check to help us if we're dum dums? Oh yeah. I have a guess. I'm, I have a guess, but I'm scared what will happen if I'm wrong. So do I. <laughs> I'll give it to you this way. Um, they, uh, you can roll. Your character can roll. Each of you can roll insight plus command difficulty two to see if your guess sounds like the right answer. Because your characters are far more clever than we. Mm-hmm. I rolled that with the uh, advantage, uh, or focus, sorry. I'm guessing persuasion will apply in this case. Uh, I'll have to say no, but that's a success anyway. Okay, what are your guesses? My guess is the wind. No, but you My thankfully guess. don't say that out loud. My guess was air. Ah, uh, no. Is it sound? For a momentum, I'll answer that. Is that worth it? For a momentum, I'll answer that. Sorry. I don't think it's sound. The only thing I can think of is silence, but that doesn't sound quite right. It doesn't. It doesn't fit certain. The softest whisper can destroy me, and that applies, I think. Well, I yeah. thought silence, but there's some stuff there which suggests maybe something else. Yeah. Uh, for a reason plus command difficulty two, or for two momentum, I'll give you multiple choice. Reason plus command. I think it's what, what Blackwell says. It's uh, actor. Are you going to roll insight for that, or are you going to say that aloud? I'm going to say that out loud. It seems. You're so mad. I'm like going to say
One of them, one of the lights raises up from the ground, and it seems like it becomes a sphere of gold. It changes a strange tinge of green and vanishes. Whew. I do not know if that's a good a good thing or a bad thing. <laughs> Thank you, Sa um, Thank you, Blackwell. Happy. At the very least, it means we have to do it six more times. Mm hmm. Uh, Efrix, roll for me fitness plus security difficulty of one. You've been out here for oh, a bit. Oh, good. And the, and the dust isn't really going away. Mm-hmm. Kitty, you're fine. Uh, the light you're in seems to be protecting you. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Great. That's why I wanted to get to the ship, but then there was a captain on you. So. <laughs> Could've just left them there. You wouldn't have minded. Pray for me. Yep, saw that coming. Ouch. Oh, no. Yeah, I'm in big trouble. You, you, you do have um, a couple of momentum to at least soak the comp. But, yeah, but I'm still in trouble if I fail this roll because I already have three stress. Yeah, I will soak the complication so I don't immediately die. That would be. Okay, so I, I don't get extra challenge dice then. Oh, one stress. Sorry, it has intense, two stress. Intense, vicious, That's, I should say. I think that puts me at an injury. With only two, no, no, you have to get all five in one go. Oh, it, in one go? Okay. Yeah. I mean, adding up isn't great either, but you know. There is a house. All right. One, there is a house. One enters it blind and comes out seeing. What is it? Out of character, I think it's a library. Can you put it in chat again? Sure. Make an insight. Insight will to see if library is correct because that's. Uh, that will be uh, insight command difficulty two. Mm-hmm. You're not mm -hmm. sure. It could be right, it could be wrong. Hmm. You were right. I don't know if it's going to matter. Then I. Library. Do. How many are there? One, two, three, four, five. Oh. Bolts of golden lightning flash out from the surrounding uh, five and strike Kiddick's body. Oh. I believe you just took an injury. Yeah, you did. You can spend two uh, threats to stay up. Or you can go unconscious, because this is non-lethal. They're just shocking you. I'm fine with uh, spending two threats. Okay, so you get shocked, and wow, that hurt a lot. But somehow you're able to, out of captain's pride or something, you're staying awake. Uh, vanity and pride, yes. Uh, huh, apparently not. <sighs> 
Any ideas, Doctor? Well, I'm just kind of swinging at the fact that there's house in it. Like, schoolhouse? Like a schoolhouse? I mean, you could even go church if you're going a more religious route. Yeah. Is it in New Orleans? <laughs> <laughs> doesn't help you at all. They call the rising sun. Uh-huh. <sighs> oh, this could come up here. What was the rule to get multiple choice? Uh, that is going to be... I'm going to be nice. Uh, reason command difficulty of three. Nope, can't use doctor's orders from that. What's your role? Uh, Mine's doctor. 14. Uh, and I don't 13. have a focus in riddles, surprisingly. If someone Where's had Grinnan that focus, you... I would have been so happy. <laughs> Where's Grinnan when you need him? On another planet? Yeah. <laughs> oh, fucking some, uh, some goo, I suppose. Sorry, that's the second F bomb this evening. I'll I'll stop. I would assume as a captain you have a better command than I do. I do. I have a five. I'll even let you assist each other because you're kind of you're both trying to figure this out and going. Like, uh, mm -hmm. is that the right answer? Well, is, without actually saying it aloud, you're kind of communicating with each other. Um kind of get what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Do you want to roll or should I roll? Uh, you should because mine is only 14. Well, as I said, mine's a 13. so it's. Oh, is it? Oh, yeah, I, can, I can lead it then. My math. I could not. I it cut out on it. Um, okay. Why is your reason so bad? That's what science officers are for. This riddles apply in uh, Starfleet protocols. I wouldn't say so, no. No? We've been dealing with Q, that's... Non-carbon-based life forms. I will have to say no in this case. Oh, I mean, dang. Did, didn't okay. no riddles are sentient? <laughs> I mean, some are. You say that, uh, but some are. Survival. I'd increase complication. Then no. Ah, uh, there we go. And your guess was what again? We were asking for multiple choice. Oh, for multiple choice. choice. My mistake. I'm sorry. Because I, the person playing this character, am very, very bad at riddles when put on the spot. It's like I don't know what words or vocabulary are anymore. Cool, two of the things that we have already been kicking around. I'd probably say one of the top two, it just depends on how you want to go with the meaning of it. Yeah. Then I go for school. But it's your make you making the choice. I will die otherwise. <laughs> I would, I, I would also die. Surprise, we're yeah. at the same level of threat right now, <laughs> or same level of. Can I insight on one of them? Sure, uh, be insight command difficulty two. I lost do school. Okay. School. Whoa, no. The answer was so was good, weird. the planet even shrunk. shrunk. <laughs> Two of the lights vanish. 
Oh, thank goodness. You're welcome. <laughs> well, now we know your name. Well, I wouldn't call it a name per se, more adjective, really. I see. Well, it isn't very good keeping someone captive. But then again, no offense, all that? powerful being, but it's very hot out here. Can we? Yes, yes, I'm sorry. Oh, you can come in. You can trust us. <laughs> <laughs> oh, great. <laughs> See, you say that, but when you say it like that. Well, just get in here. Should... And you find yourself popped into the circle, and hey, you're protected. Oh, no. Oh dear. I thought about that before when it opened up the spot. I was like, I could walk into it. Uh, you will notice that Efrix is uh, a little bit puffed up. It's an Obi-Wan style. Oh, yeah, I can, I can do that. All right. Yeah, they puff up like pufferfish when they're angry. Hey, look, if we eat her, we'll get poisoned. No, 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 wrong thing. You sure? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. They don't walk on two legs. Maybe they evolved. Um... Uh, I mean, are you a fish person? That's not very oh nice God. to ask. Well, it, I'm curious. I'm not trying to be mean. Are you a fish person? I am not. Damn. And one of them vanishes. Kitty leaves, leans to... Uh... Oh! <laughs> are you... Uh, leans to uh, the doctor and is... it's very strange when they talk in the same voice. Well, we're all the same person, really. Well, theoretically speaking, I mean, there's a greater connection of all things. I mean, there's more than one voice, really. I mean, there's like, what? Let's see, there's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine voices right now. I see. Is, or so. Does this mean that the captain is inside one of you? Oh, my God. I certainly hope not. I did okay. not ask for consent, and I apologize. If that oh, no, no. You're inside yourself. Well, I mean, that's not quite <laughs> accurate, but... Well. Wow. I would expect this of Captain Grennan, not from me. This is co this comes as a great shock. Hey. Actually, this is a great shock, and you get that. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't curse. I said fudge. Thankfully, there's lots of them, so you only take... Oh, God. Three stress. Oh, no. Wasn't it vicious? Uh, not from their lightning. The wind was vicious. Yes. Okay, so Take the how, lightning. How, how, how much stress have I taken? Uh, five plus three more, so eight. Uh... You're probably still up. That begs the question. Uh, so I don't know, I, I really, really don't know how to fill out this form correctly, I, I suppose. Uh, it says I've stre six filled out uh, out of uh, 12, 13 mm -hmm. in total. So I might be down. Uh, no, you need it to be, you, either, you have to suffer five in one go or your whole stress track. I need to suffer five in one go. Yeah, but you once. killed it with threat. Right. Yeah. yeah. yeah okay. Uh, so yeah, they're very casually just zap you. Core. Thankfully, oh, it hurts. You have so much more stress available than I do. I'm not sure so, that's correct, but yeah. Is there so any, vo any other voice that has? A... I have not that much. No, no, no. I don't think I have thirteen. That's the thing. I, I think that's just how many. What's there your are. fitness and security? Uh, nine is thirteen. Never mind. Yeah. And there you go. By the way, Doctor, it's very rude to interrupt us and you get shocked. <laughs> Even though in character, she hasn't done anything. She's just standing there. Mm. Three damage. Right. <laughs> now I'm up. Now, is there any other voice that has an uh, idea what we should do? I mean, we could kill them. I mean, it's not like they're going to... They just walked in, and one's just standing there for some reason. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. If I may interject. Well, you asked, so go ahead. 
Wouldn't it be better just let us leave? We'll never talk about this again. We'll go our separate ways. I'll pay the medical bills. I mean, that would be fine. And I don't know if you could pay bills like in this manner, but the thing is, you're kind of biased. And, you know, so is the doctor. Hold on. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Uh, biased? I forgive you for now. Me? Mm -hmm. Am I biased? Well, yeah, you want to live. I mean, obviously, unless you don't. I mean, that's a different thing, at which point we'll totally help you with that. Well, how would you feel if I killed you? That would be rude, wouldn't it? Oh, uh, it would be. But that's why we're well, discussing it. Well, yes. May I be part of this discussion? No. Then how are you... How are we supposed to come to a, a fair agreement about this, then? Oh, nothing about this is fair. Well, I think that's unfair, then. You're right. Well, I won't be part of anything that's unfair. And okay. don't you dare zap me. We're not the ones that will zap you. You'll do that all on your own. Well... Oh my God. I'm sometime in the future I might set myself. That's up to me, but in this moment I would rather not. Can we get on with the next riddle so that we might get out of here? Well that's what we're trying to figure out. See, there's a bunch of other voices that are just kind of listening in and they're not really offering opinions right now. And that's very distressing. So if anybody has a suggestion as to what we should be doing right now, that'd be great. I mean I could totally kill them, but we could let them go, we could sap them again, that'd be funny. Maybe you could ask them to perform a trick. Perform a trick. Yeah, that sounds like fun. Yeah, these we're the other voices. Yeah, see, uh, the other voices didn't know they were the other voices. Yeah, well, there, there are nine other voices, yeah. So. Okay, okay. Let's do it like this. Mm -hmm. I can perform a trick. Cool. But both of us have to be outside of the sphere. No. Mm -hmm. Let's compromise. Look, if, if, if they shock themselves much more, they're going to be useless anyway. So I say we heal them up first. They'll last longer that way. Fine. You have no stress. But they're not leaving the circle because then we can't do things to them. I mean, but we should make it difficult. What kind of trick do you want? Hmm. My trick was going to be healing, but, uh, well. I mean, we could hurt them. So please don't. Oh, okay. No, let's just make it really complicated. Ooh, I have an idea. I have could them... sing Denobulan Opera. Ooh, oh, good I lord, no. Them. Have them tell <laughs> 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 I'm in the mood for a joke. <laughs> All right. All right. All right. We're, we're listening. What kind of underwear do clouds wear? I don't know. Underwear. Eh. Oh, damn it. Okay. Oh. One of the oh. Okay, that's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> I learned that one today. <laughs> yeah, I'll give her that one. Yeah. And now? Oh, I'm still here. So, well, we are all still here, technically speaking. But you know, another joke. Do I, I mean, stand on my hand? I mean, if you can find a joke that tops that one, I mean, that's going to be hard to get over. Give me a second. I'll have to think about it. Sure. You know, it's not really that hot when you think about it. I mean, isn't everything just merely a dream when you think really hard about it? Well, it's a dry heat. Well, it, yeah, I suppose. Though. Well, for you, it's a lot hotter, to be fair. I mean, could be hotter, but thankfully, we're not that mean. Well, one of us isn't. Well, Just why do you persist in those bags of water? It must get terribly uncomfortable. Are you, you can't ready? be too hot. You can't be too cold. Doesn't Probably make any inefficient. sense. Ooh, I think it has a joke. Captain Grennan's dignity. <laughs> oh, shit. Well, it's nice to see we're back on the ragging Captain Grenantry.
Yeah. God damn it. <laughs> now, if I may be so bold, Doctor, mm. let's go. Yes, let's wow. get out of here. I am. <laughs> and the two of you start heading back to the Miranda, which you will discover very shortly seems to be perfectly fine. So it's mm. like, let it go. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> um, that was so I'm sorry, cool. Brendan. Yet awesome. <laughs> Captain, wait. Now if I scan it, are there cow cuts? Uh, no. Mm -hmm. Good. Uh, new scene. As we cut back to the expedition. Who are probably asleep. Nope. Dang. Seeing what Prax got out of the pad. Man, I did not need that. I'm really sorry. So, um, I did ask one question. He never got back to me. Well, it's because I'm not giving you an answer. Suck it. No, um, um, wow. No, uh, oh, it helps if I look in the right chat. That would that'd be productive. He gets up at he when he's a GM, don't he? Oh, um, <laughs> tell me about it. <laughs> um to answer that last question yes although it's one of those things that was you had to look through it and read between the lines but interesting okay yeah Um, is there actual evidence to those charges? I attach those orders. So Prax studies the screen carefully as Blackwell uh, enjoys the scenery. I like that captain's ready room. I know where the booze is. She taps on the comm badge. Bridge. Uh, bridge here. Setting course to follow the USS Salamander's warp trail. Aye, Captain. Setting course. And you can have someone control plus con against a difficulty of zero. This is just a momentum generated. Uh, the ship assists with engines plus con. Yeah. I'll start hiding some of this. <laughs> awesome. Just trying to scroll and find it. <laughs> I'm a generate through momentum there. Whoops, I hit you. You're back. Apparently, um, this admiral who's in charge of special operations is looking to become the new commanding officer of Narenda Station known origin. Apparently there have been charges filed against Admiral Admiral. Sorry, you kind of faded out the end there. Um, apparently there's been charges filed against Admiral Hepburn. Oh, god damn it. <laughs> Pulling this shit. Anything yeah. to the charges, Captain? Uh, I mean, that they look official, but something's not adding up in all of this, especially with two missing starships and a former captain who might have it out for Admiral Heppard. Hmm. Starfleet well, maybe, captain. Maybe if we can find the kismet, we can figure out exactly what's going on. Or, for that matter, the Tiananmen or the... Uh, Salamander. 
don't want to contact the team I'm in just yet, Doctor. I don't want to wave our hand. I want more information gathered from this. I can't at all. Hi, Captain. Uh, the ship has a reason science roll difficulty three heading its way to spot something on long range sensors. Uh, difficulty two because sensors. It's true. Yep. What's the ship rolling for reason science? Uh, s uh sensor science in that case. Oh. Crax is heading back onto the bridge. Okay. Uh, I'll go back out too. Because I'm, I can do a reason science of 14. Casey, are you better? Uh, no. <laughs> so this ship will be a 14 anyway. It'll have a focus. Yeah, so go ahead and use the ship. And we'll spend uh, one of the difficulty two, so we'll just go ahead and spend one. Oh, nice. momentum gained? Yep. Uh, there's an energy signature of a starship at as you seem to be warping uh, along the path that the salamander took. As it looks like it kind of was going one direction and then it veered off suddenly. In a very erratic and strange way. So oh, move us closer to that signal. Um, operations, can you see if you can't get an identification of uh, that vessel? Uh, that is going to be a, a reason plus con roll difficulty of uh, two. I think we'll just use the ship again. Uh, is the ship assisting? Yes. Uh, computer's gone. Yes. Is it difficulty two? Yes. Uh, spending a momentum. Oh, you're going where the salamander went, so... Something decloaks as you sense it. Oh, no. Open hailing frequencies. Ops. And I think you succeeded at that roll. You did. Uh, you identify it as a Klingon vessel. It is a Vorcha class. Its shields and weapons are powered on. Uh -oh. This is Captain Israel Prax, the unidentified Klingon vessel. We're currently on a search and rescue mission for two Federation vessels. Please respond. Give me control plus engineering difficulty of, I believe it's just one. It's fairly easy. Or zero, actually. Uh, I'm just using support the uh, <laughs> ship. Come on, uh, the also totally. like our missing player characters. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, communications engineering. Yes, it is zero. I was right the first time. Oh. 
well. Well, technically it is a success because it's difficulty zero. Yep. So you do get two momentum out of it. But the ship can't. Uh, the ship can't assist if the crew doesn't yep. roll anything. And they can't. They can't assist if they fail. If they succeed, the assist still happens. So if the difficulty is zero, you succeed. <laughs> oh. It's just to see if there's a complication that comes. Yeah. Ah. And it's oh, a momentum it's generator. Good. So. Okay. Never mind. Thing is, they get to roll back to see if they get some. Boop. And boop. And boop. I said boop. Go. There you go. This is the Rallarg. You are about to enter a restricted area of Klingon space. If you continue your path, you will be fired upon. Understood, but I was not aware that this section of space was restricted. That is why we are doing you the courtesy of letting you know, since we are allies after all. You wouldn't Aren't happen to have allies. Any, we are indeed, but you wouldn't happen to have any sensor log data uh, pertaining to a missing Federation vessel that traveled. Uh, give me presence, command, or con. Uh, difficulty of. Uh, it's going to be opposed. For some reason, he's being very secretive. Okay. Uh, persuasion for focus. Yeah, he's not that hostile to you yet. Uh, one threat, and I'm gonna spend two momentum. I'm gonna spend one threat. Well, that's a great roll there, Cap. Good job. Good job, Captain Klingon. Uh, you get three momentum. <laughs> We're Captain Good. Captain Klingon. Very, very well. Good. I have very good history with Klingons. <laughs> Fine. It's true. We'll send you the data, but you can go no further. And he sends you the data over subspace. Understood. Um, and give my regards to uh, Chancellor uh, Martok. Nah. He cuts in, He cuts the uh, comment that after sneering at you. <laughs> Charming fellow. I heard that, Prax. Sorry. <laughs> uh, but yes, you asked for information about the salamander? Yes. Uh, it would appear... Um, they landed on a planet strangely enough, uh, in the Ha'atoria ha system. Ha. Huh. Is that in Romulan or Klingon space? That is well within Klingon space. And even though Miranda's are equipped to land on planets. Funny enough, uh, for two momentum, something interesting can happen that will be helpful. Sure. <laughs> you are receiving a hail. From, from that planet. Audio or visual? Uh, both. On screen. Uh, you see a mirror image of yourself and Blackwell and Cassie uh, standing before your bridge. Except uh, you look very pleased with yourself. Blackwell looks like he's having the grumpiest day in the world, and Cassie looks like someone threw a flat, uh, took his picture without his permission. Well, that guy looks exactly like me. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Uh, greetings. Greetings. And you are? Well, I would like to say I'm you, but I'm not. Um, actually, I think 
we had something of yours, um, and uh, I think you might want it back. Uh, yeah. Is that true? I think that's true. This is yeah. true. Are Good. they all right? I mean, uh, well, I mean, yeah. Blackwell. I mean, we healed bit. them, says the other Blackwell. See? Yeah. So they're fine. Hmm. Um, yeah, they do seem to be trying to call out for help, but uh, we kind of, for their safety, not let them do that because uh, there's a lot of Klingons that want to kill them right now. Well, not them in particular, just any intruders in a, what is otherwise a holy place. Although <laughs> it's funny that they think we're holy because that's not how that works. I mean, well, some of us are holy. Anyway, uh, point is, um, would you like them back? I mean, we could put them back. I mean, we could, you know, we would, we wouldn't mind hanging on to them. If you want them, you know, we could, um, we could I very much in. would like them back. I actually need to talk with them about something very important. Oh, fine. You can talk to them. At that moment, they disappear and you see, uh, Captain Kiddick and what appears to be, uh, Dr. Uh, Efrix standing on the bridge of the salamander as and for you guys you were ship was trying to call out because uh, the calcan crystals weren't aboard you tried to call back to starfleet and you got the expedition somehow this is captain kiddick of the salamander uh, who do i have the pleasure of speaking to captain azra prax of the federation starship expedition we've been searching oh, for you Prax. how nice to meet you i uh have only heard of you before. We haven't had the pleasure of meeting. I've heard lots of good things. <clears throat> Thank you. I was trying to reach Starfleet, and I suppose I succeeded in this endeavor. Um, we are in deep Klingon space. Is that correct, Jim? That's correct, yeah. We are uh, going to try to get out of here. We do not have the cargo. That is most regretful. Okay, uh, Captain Kiddick. Um, I suggest uh, at this moment in time we keep uh, knowledge bases to ourselves for the moment until we can properly meet and get you out of the situation. Very well. For security reasons. Well then. Uh... In that case, would you like us to get on the move or to stay put and make sure that we have an escort out of Klingon space? Prepare to be depart the planet's surface. I'm going to contact the Klingon vessel that's nearby to ensure that you be able to leave unharmed. Great. Thank you, Captain. She motions to cut the communication. Ops, open communic uh, signal to the log. Is that right? Captain, if I may, before you do, perhaps those uh, entities we were speaking with earlier, if they're able, if they are what they seem to be, as some sort of very powerful entities, it's possible they could, I mean, they were talking about giving them back to us, maybe they could literally just move them from where they are to our side of the border. Perhaps. See if we can't get a hold of the planet first, then. Dear. Out from each of your bodies steps a doppelganger. Yeah. God, don't do that. Um, mm. Ooh, the real thing. Neat. <laughs> Welcome aboard my ship. You mean my ship, right? No. Actually, you don't own things, right? Aren't you, you like space communists or something? <laughs> oh my god. Uh, why, no. why is mine more wrinkly than yours? <laughs> god. <laughs> Uh, I mean, seriously, joints are a little achy. You should really take better care of yourself, doctor. Oh, shut up. 
Oh, this is fun. Uh, no, uh, we're not. And while this ship does belong to the to Starfleet, I am its captain. Hey, Cassie, Cassie, hit the other one. Uh, Lieutenant Cassie, your double is trying to punch you. Ah, uh, oh I God. block <laughs> or um, dodge. <laughs> Opposed daring security. Uh, roll twice. Do you want to take the first roll or the second roll? Uh, I'll go with the second roll. Okay, so the first one's I'm going to get beat up by myself. <laughs> oh, good. Okay. I mean, there's a joke here about uh, beating on oneself. Oh, shush yeah. you. <laughs> um, you know, uh, I Not have a talent person. as well, uh, so I have intense damage effect. Uh, oh, no. So I guess that, uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean what were you expecting hey huh. that's not too bad and then I'll roll for my actual self ah <laughs> uh, yes I have emerged victorious your double swings at you and then stumbles past you and falls into another Starfleet officer double Sam Blackwell oh. looks at double Captain Prax and goes ha you owe me 20 Mechlex Uh, Casey will say, uh, clearly not an exact double in terms of martial ability. Well, no, but I have class. Oh, wait, I can't talk for him. That's right. This is so hard to do when there's three of us. Let's see, you know, he'll want to start in a really cruddy movie. So, uh, that w you were talking about stealing a ship from Starfleet, and you are going to give it to me. Uh, no. Oh. It's amusing this joke guy. really is. Um, I was funny. hoping you would, you know, be so kind as to release the salamander. We did. To our care. It's the Klingons that want to kill them. Well, okay. not them in particular. Do you have the ability to transport it near the expedition so we do not vol uh, violate Klingon space. But then you won't shoot the Klingon ship. Or they won't shoot you. So I would know. very much not like to engage the Klingon ship. What about you, Cassie? You want to shoot some Klingons? Avenge uh, your father or brother or mother or whatever it is that gets you out here? Uh, maybe another day. I'll keep you to that. How about you, Blackwell? Come on. They kidnapped your I don't want sister. anybody to shoot anybody. Oh, right. You're a doctor. It's this messy. Time. The other one would have killed someone. Fine. We can bring them here. They're insinuating that I would kill someone. Use the sound effect. Use the sound effect. <laughs> the other Blackwell is saying that. No, not that one. Not that one either. Blue powder powder. Powder powder. Blue power powder power. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> the simple things. Salamander pops into existence. What the? I hate all powerful energy beings, says Blackwell. I would much rather deal with the Arganians. They're far more peaceful. Hey. I heard ah. that. Stepped out of the wrong body. Oh, right. Sorry. <laughs> Operation <laughs> Ops, please send a uh, Coordinates for the Salmaner or Salmaner to form into formation alongside of us. Expedition to Salamander, please come in. Salamander. 
Uh, giving you coordinates, uh, please follow along the expedition. Uh, Piers, our captain, uh, wants you to follow us for the time being. Uh, don't worry, you're safe, we think. I acknowledge expedition. And so we need to work on your phrasing. Uh, sorry. Muttering, you know, oh, it's worse than the Hatfield. Jesus. <laughs> well, Doctor, it seems we're in... Uh the right space, at least. I hope so. I sure do. I'm just imagining confused Klingon noises on the other ship. <laughs> <laughs> Klingon Have noises. they developed poking technology? Did we not know this? That's some kind of spore drive! No. <laughs> <laughs> no. No. <laughs> That was bad, and you should feel bad. Oh. I kind of do. New scene. <laughs> and uh, I will say at this point that the uh, salamander has managed to evade death. You were one wrong word, one wrong thing, and those things would have killed him. Whoop, whoop. Yeah, so... I got that feeling. Ooh. Yeah, I was... Uh... If someone was like, go ahead, kill me. I'm like, oh, okay, and then they would. Because <laughs> these beings are jerks like that. Especially the one that sounds like Blackwell. That one's a real jerk. Oh my god, that was hysterical. Alright, I hate that guy. <laughs> yeah, it's my line. Give it back. <clears throat> Penned. You come upon what appears to be a Romulan encampment. There's guards standing outside. High walls. Within the walls are many, many Starfleet crew in pens surrounded with electric fences and force fields. Is there anywhere I could go for a height advantage, say on a tree or on top of some rocks? Uh, you can attempt... Um... We'll call this insight security difficulty two to create the advantage. Uh, maybe give him a threat. Yeah, I'm gonna give him a threat so I can proc bold. Okay. Um, intelligence or composure? I'll give you intelligence. Oh, wow, that's not helpful at all. Let's try that. Yeah, nah, I need that was a bad color choice, that one. No. No, freaking. Well, you're on a ledge. You know that much. I'm just going to color it so it's like, you know. Yeah, yeah. Cool. There we go. Now we can see it. So, yeah, you're on a ledge that's at least put you level with the guys on, on top of the wall. So is it just the four on the wall and none inside? Uh, there seem to be some buildings as well. There's four Romulans visible. It looks like there's enough housing to fit. Uh, uh, let's roll for this. Actually. We'll see. Actually. Thirty-four Romulans. Oh, jeez. Are there any weaknesses in the structural, like the walls? Uh, for two momentum, there can be. Wait, wait. First, pen before you do that. Spend, uh, roll uh, to see if you can pick up life signs. Uh, sure. Figure out how many are actually in there. Can I roll for Romulans? Sure. Uh, it is, would be reason, medicine, difficulty of... You're some distance away, so I'm going to say difficulty two. Hmm. Hmm. Spend a momentum. Could I spend my determination? 
It's your determination. You need a value, though. Uh, throw out the handbook. I hate to say this, but that would fit the handbook of Starfleet operations. Yeah. What, being stranded on a frozen planet looking, <laughs> trying to scan from Romulans to rescue Federation prisoners? After some um, way you oddly, it's a, it's, a, it's a third year course. It's called oh, survival training. Okay. It's not specifically Romulans, but similar situations. How In about, fact, you're actually more well armed than you were at the academy. How about when shit goes wrong, figure it out? Because that one I'll give you. things have gone wrong. <laughs> that one I'll give you. Yeah, in the survivor course, they give you a knife and say, here you are, try not to die. I mean, all you need is a knife. Yeah. I mean, uh, I prefer a hatchet, but, you know. I'll... Barter didn't have to do that course, it was his life growing up. Maybe <laughs> composure, but that's a, that's a stretch. I'd say no. Two momentum. Could it, like, stay winter or not in this freaking place? Anyway. Uh, oh, heck. Well, it's not expensive oh, right, because get... you spent determination, right? Yeah, on a 10 roll. Uh, for two momentum, there could be far less there than what you estimate. Please. Yeah. <laughs> there are... 33 Romulans then. Oh. Wow. Yup. But you know for sure there are 33 then. Barbara, you setting that phase your own. Why? <laughs> That's so unfortunate. Wow. <laughs> question, GM. <laughs> Due to that god awful assistance you just provided, could I ask a question? Mm -hmm. uh, sure. God. Is it possible there is some type of generator between some of these buildings where the Romulans are? Um, I have to say to you that the generator is below ground. It's, it's somewhere in the basement level compound. <laughs> oh, that's terrible. Um, is it possible for me to pick off the guard on the outside of the camp in order of them not looking, like different rotations? Um, honestly, what you'd have to do, um, actually, for two momentum, uh, you don't have to spend it right now, I'm just giving you the option here. For two momentum, what you could do is you could uh, have the opportunity be that the advantage be that only these two are watching each other, and these the, the far two are watching each other. So if you take out these two in quick succession, the other two won't be aware. Mm. Otherwise, normally they'd be they'd have divide they'd be constantly watching each other to make sure no one's being picked off. But with that advantage, maybe they're just being lazy this time around. Yeah, I kind of want to do that. So I'll mark. I'll actually mark these guys. So I don't forget. That's what I said. So this is Team Red. This is Team Blue. Uh, this is a long range shot. Um, so difficulty is three base. Oh, uh, you hang on. Don't forget to like aim at everything. Oh yeah, I know. Like don't tell them how to suck eggs. So, yeah, so are we one threat for bold security? Or do, you know, you're the captain. You did make a crack at your expense. Uh, you should probably demote him. So I'd do. What did I do to deserve this? Does a disruptor rifle have accurate? Yeah, that's oh. what I'm trying to figure out. Yeah, because I, I, yes, I know I've got phaser, but I don't, I don't, I've got disruptor. Uh, four vicious, one accurate. There you go. Would you like to make it lethal? Uh, no, I'll just stun them. Okay. Well, wing them anyway, because it doesn't really have a stun setting, but I know what you mean. Yeah. <laughs> don't aim for the visals. 
I mean, if I roll multiple successes, I can't really help that. It's like, ooh, I hit him in the chest. I did not mean to do that. <laughs> so yeah, I will... Well, I was aiming for the leg, but I hit the... I hit an artery. It's also, uh, uh, you'll be excused because uh, of the situation so you're in. And, uh, just as a reminder, going forward, because you're going to be doing aim with an accurate weapon, uh, you won't need to have bold in order to re-roll. You'll just be able to re-roll any number. It does also mean he can re-roll that, and if he fudges any of those, he can use the bold to re-roll. That's it. true. Yeah. So yeah. So I'm bolding and accurate and aiming. No whiff. Uh, can I get away with either composure to steady myself for the shop, shop shot, or intelligence operative for taking someone out quietly? Add increased complication. I'll give it to you. Yeah, I'll I don't go for it. Worry. And then you could take yeah, a harder with you. If only just because you have such an ungodly amount of uh, re rolls. So re Dead Eye Marksman. I'll do that first re roll. Oh, do you have Dead Eye Marksman? Yes! Oh, shit, yeah. They both were crazy, but. I do! Um, so, yeah, so that's a um, five Gain successes. Momentum. Five. Oh yeah, two rerolls. He's got an uh, aim oh, you rerolled one of them. Yeah, yeah. You rerolled one uh, of them. So what's the difficulty free? Yep. So two momentum gained. Nice. Roll your damage. <coughs> Where's your sheet, friend? It's over here. Uh, that's and it's a vicious one instead of so that's an, uh, that needs another five. It's not rolling. Or that's yeah, that's that's ten. Sorry. So yeah, plus that. Just disintegrate a Romulan. I think I just disintegrated a Romulan. I would like you to... hit him. He spins, holding his arm, and he falls off the wall and plummets to uh, a rather. You can almost hear the the crack as he hits the ground. A uh, swift task. Uh, give me two momentum for that. Poof, poof. Uh, this this next shot is at an increased difficulty. Yep, I will again bold for one dice. Bold. I will be. Are aiming. you aiming as well? I will be. I will need a threat or momentum for extra minor. Uh, spend the momentum. <laughs> or don't. You know. It's difficult. Yeah, it's difficulty four now, isn't it? Yeah. So take another two. Sure. I'll do the increased complication range again for the focus. Okay, yeah. I'll reroll the first one. Uh, I'll leave that. Gain a momentum. Yeah, have fun. <laughs> ah. Falls to his death. Well, not necessarily death. He could be lethally injured. But he falls. Uh, now you just have to see again. Yeah, pretty much. So, was there a structural weakness I, I could get in? Say again? Was there a structural weakness I could find or somewhere I could sneak in? Uh, without the guards there, you could actually scale the wall. It's kind of the negative of it. This thing's more meant to prevent the slimes from getting in rather than people. Sure. People with hands and feet, I should say. I shall scale the walls. As Penn begins his infiltration, we cut to Grenon and Varder, who have gathered up with some of the crew that have managed to find each other and created their own little encampment with prefabs and such. All right. I think I can. Uh, I think I can take care of organizing the uh, 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 the encampment here, uh, Varder. You should go and meet back up with Pend. Uh, so, yes, Captain. Uh, it, 
is there potentially a rifle or something in this prefab? <laughs> uh, for uh, the cost of a rifle, I think it's one op and two escalation. I want to say. I don't even remember. <laughs> to look again. It's been a bit. Laser rifle. Yes, it is. You yes, got that entirely correct. Pat myself on the back there. Uh, so yeah, it would cost you momentum and it would give me two threat if you want a rifle. Would people be fine with that? Uh, sh sure. Great. I just want like, two head pats. Yep. You have secured yourself a rifle from guards in the camp. Whoops. Let's go track down Pend. I mean, we know exactly where he went or which direction he went. So, you know. So is Vardar going by himself? Or is he grabbing one of the one? I, I, uh, I the security officer on your way. Yeah, we probably. I mean, form together a quick security team kind of thing. Yeah. I, I'd grab like I don't know. Are you trying to say grab a? Ooh, I know. Grab support uh, character. Off. Or are you trying to say a team? <laughs> You can I, I, do I, both, to be fair. Yeah, I'd bring along Trelloc, because Andorian, Cold Planet. Wow, profiling. I mean, accurate, but profile. I mean, yeah, we can bring around Trelloc and also a security team and just be like, yo, the Romulans are this way, so we'll be screening for them anyway. <laughs> and great, someone can be an Andorian. Do I need to do a roll for the security team advantage because we're not a ship? Uh, I for... be allowed to pilot her. Pilot her. <laughs> Jaeger her along. Uh, anyway. Um, <laughs> I'll, I'll, um, I'll take, I'll take Thrillock since Grennan's hand, uh, handling things back at the... Uh... Back at the ranch. Yeah, I was going to say um... the ranch. Exactly. Uh, for a security team as well, you would you would have, since you have no momentum, it would cost you one, it would give me one threat to have the advantage of a security team that you two are leading. Or wouldn't it be a, couldn't you do a presence, uh, uh, like presence security task to create the advantage? I'm going to say no, just because you're, uh, he, he's risking pulling away people to defend the camp if it gets attacked. If you're on the ship, I might have, I would have agreed with that, but you're kind of in a, you don't have everybody, you just have everyone. Oh, well, now that you said that, uh, we might want to keep people around. <laughs> He's going to move a little more into the center of the camp for some reason. You do also have prefabs, which are basically prepared positions, and you can defend yourselves for a while there. And we're not planning on being gone an extended amount of time. Hopefully. Find a flare. <laughs> or make one. That you can fire into the sky if you're in trouble. I mean, that, that you just use a phaser for that. So, security team or no? Eh, I'd say no. Fine, okay, just the two of us will be fun. We, we've given we've given the GM a bit of quite a bit of threat. These two need to roll for me fitness plus security, difficulty two, to get to pend before things get worse. Security. What's uh... for who? You probably. I, um, I didn't specify. Uh, I'm gonna give Thrillock a focus in survival, which I assume will come into play here. Yeah. Oh, yeah, well, I've got that focus, so <laughs> I don't even need to ask. <laughs> and actually, out of, uh, because of the racial trait, I'm actually getting the Andorian uh, one, uh, the advantage of having one less difficulty, because right. they're not cold. This is not uncomfortable um, to them at all. Hey, I've got the goo. Uh, you <laughs> hilariously, you'd have to give me two threat that to benefit from the advantage of having. Yeah, um, of no. I'm fine. Um, because I've got the bone net still Ooh. exactly there. I'll keep my bones warm with the bone net. Oh wait. Um, to yeah. Reduce difficulty. That that works. Yeah. So, warm warm bones, bone net. There we go. Do 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 do. Uh, Pen, give me fitness security difficulty two to climb the wall quickly enough that uh, no one sees you, like no one inside the camp is wa walking around. You get here to watch this little Tellerite climbing the wall and it's like, oh shit, lie down, <laughs> cover him. <laughs> Bone heating juice. Uh, intelligence officer, because I'm right. sneaking into a camp. Sure. Uh, take a threat. Sure. Yeah, 
Yeah, I'll leave it. Get your momentum back. Duke. Okay, you're in the camp. And uh, Varder and... Uh, I really should put the name down, so there's a reason to put nameplates. I, I don't forget who they are. There we go. Thralic, there we go. So Thralic and Varder notice uh, Pen slip his way across the wall. You can also see the two downed uh, Romulans sitting outside of the walls. Yeah, well... Well, he certainly is efficient. Yeah, let's uh, find cover set up to cover him. <laughs> this is going to be a Pen plan. I mean, we've got combat just haven't we? I don't know if that'll work. Uh, at this sort of range, they will. Now, whether or not they're intercepted on the way, is different. Also, yeah. a good point, and they're if looking out for Starfleet. It'll people. blow his cover right now. He could possibly blow his cover. Uh, Sorry. And Penn's operating that on the, the assumption he's alone anyway. <laughs> yeah, true. So we'll find cover and basically sight in to fire if his cover gets blown. Uh, both Thrallic and Varder can attempt to roll uh, control security, difficulty two, to basically position themselves where they get the advantage of being not only in cover, but having nice, stable shooting positions. Uh, Gorilla Warfare? Yes. Uh, I don't think I have any focuses that will come into play. What was that, difficulty two? Yep. I would say, as the officer, can I assist Thrallic by pointing out something to her and rolling an assist? You're too busy getting your own position yeah. settled. Uh, I'm going to spend a uh, momentum then. Okay. I, I threatened no threat you with the bone net, but that's what that was. Okay. So uh, I got the momentum back. So, Pend, what do you do as those two are positioning themselves to cover you? Well, before I go to the Starfleet prisoners, I'm going to get a layout of the the tents, the buildings, to see who's where and what's where. Quietly, obviously. Uh, give me insight security difficulty two to create the advantage of having a good layout in your head. Uh, operative and a threat. Uh, I'd give sure. him a moment. I'd use a momentum instead. No, it's for the reroll. I, I know, but he has, he's getting a lot of threat. Don't worry, you'll Don't worry, it'll be fine. You'll choose it against me. Don't worry. Yeah. It's a threat. We know what we're doing. We survived the Archon mission on the ground. I mean, barely. You got. Okay, I, I didn't get hit. It's fine. <laughs> you, you now have the benefit of uh, having the advantage, sorry, of uh, knowing, having a good layout in your head. Uh, and you gain the momentum out of it. All the threat goes away. Yep. <laughs> As the tents start spilling forth Romulans. They're all deploying out. But they're not running at you. They seem to be all rushing to do something. So you have some time to find somewhere to hide. Or you can try to take them on. That's uh, your call. They're not I'm angry gonna... running out. They're just regular running out. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to try and take cover and just duck down. Because, oh man... Uh, roll for me. Opposed. Uh, when I'm daring security. Take a threat. Sure. Maybe spend two momentum. Yeah. Operative. Yes. I'll re-roll that zero. Man, Pend is good at what he does. Two, four, six. <clears throat> I mean, that's not looking like too many Romulans. So if I'm rolling... It's just because he can't fit them all on the map. No, no. There we go. Just imagine if I'm rolling nine dice and I go for spread, um, swift action, spread again. Um. So, uh, you find somewhere to hide. By the look of it, and you can hear them say, 
There's a Federation camp nearby. Everyone move out. We're going to take them on. Fuck. And they very quickly and efficiently start rushing out. I mean, would the security team I don't know about be able to see where this squad is moving towards? Uh, they can attempt intelligence security. Difficulty two to kind of puzzle out what they're up to. Insight? Insight, yep. Because you said intelligence. <laughs> I've run way too many darn games. I assume that's what you mean? Yes. Oh my god, I didn't actually think I'd get that. Uh, oh, it's mental, huh? Well, I got it anyway, so... Oh, you don't yeah, you did. Me. Sure, we'll just go with the one that's probably been more technically trained than the other one. You can just roll as is. I was going to say, Barter's probably seen this before in terms of guerrilla warfare. <laughs> Cardassians figure out where the Bajoran camp is. Um, Throlek realizes where they're going. Uh, Varder hasn't rolled, so he doesn't quite know yet. Oh. Oh, now he does. Yeah, it's very obvious this whole camp is deploying to go that way. <laughs> so, how many are leaving? Uh, about uh, 31. Okay. Romulus. 31 Romulans leaving. How many Federation personnel are in the camp? Uh, 23. Okay. But they're like sardine, like packed in. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you two went back, I would obviously be leading a group of Federation members with guns if we can salvage some back. So that's going to leave, what, two Romulans in the camp for you? I mean, they're, they're believed they're leaving four Romulans in the camp with you, but it's two. Unless I've got my math wrong. Yeah, two, there's two Romans that are going to hang about. Yeah. Um, Thralok and Varder could probably start heading back and then harry the Romulans from behind when they start hitting Grenham. In fact, as we get closer, we can probably combat the camp. <laughs> it's like, if they intercept it, who cares? They're just going to think it's an out a lookout post that's seen them coming. Which isn't that wrong, really. Yeah. But it will give Brennan forewarning, and it will give the Romulans more to think about in terms of someone in their ass. That sounds a lot worse than it was meant to, but you know yeah, what I mean. That's the general theme of the night. Yeah. So I'll probably kind of be a signal for luck and then we'll just shadow the Romulans. Which is normally them doing the shadowing, but hey. I'm used to this. Question, does that green one have my gun? Yes. <laughs> he seems to be the uh, commanding officer of this uh, company. Oh. Gotta shoot him first. going to be such a mess. I mean, I had a different plan, which I know none of you would agree to. <laughs> you were just going to kill him, take your gun, and shoot your way out of the camp? Nope, just pincer them between the three of us. <laughs> 31 Romulans versus three of us? Don't be a coward. You've got a rifle. So have I. Oh my god. Okay, so... Um... We'll put it this way. We are effectively in combat. Um, think of this as like a ship. So they're all moving as one big group for now because they're coordinated and stuff. They've acted by moving. So it goes to you guys. Grinning can't act right now because he doesn't know anything's wrong yet. And are we like arguably within range to communicate that? Someone would have to spend a minor tapping their combat and telling him What's going on? Sure. So the just, uh, going? You know, very quietly, kind of. It probably involves actually pulling the combat off and holding it right against his mouth, so it sounds all all kinds of fucked up. But... Like he's eating the mic, like it's, he's right on top of it. Yep. But I'm not going to do that for all of your ears. Thank you. Is that going to farter to Graham? Captain here. What's up? You have a Romulan contingent heading your way. 31 strong. Damn. Okay, 
We'll set up defensive positions. Once they engage you, Thralek and I will hit them in the rear. This won't be easy. Uh, okay. He just stops talking there. That that's all that needed to be said. He's not going to risk saying more. All right, and uh, I think it's their turn then. Uh, wait, unless Farther wants to do something. Um, I mean, our our movement would just be shadowing them, and I'm assuming the map like they're not actually, you know, we're we're behind them somewhere. So it's whatever we need to do to keep pace with them. Uh, give me fitness security difficulty two to kind of be following after them. Fitness security, <clears throat> bone juice, <laughs> the bone juice. survival, or guerrilla warfare. They're all right. Guerrilla warfare. It's almost mm. like it's my job. Uh, does that mean Thralak then goes as well? If they're all one thing, then it's Barter and Thralak, and then it's... Uh, they have... They ha they're uh, effectively like a scale um, three group, so they have two more actions before they're done. Okay. So it will go to them unless... Uh, I mean, you got quick to action. If it's the, the first initiative. round of combat, I can quick to... I uh, might as well quick to action burn and actually to get the camp organized, because that's more important to make sure we've got a solid defense going. Yeah, unless I can't, but... Captain's immediately going to rally not just the, <laughs> the five crew support that we conveniently have, but also just everyone. This is the... Okay, everyone, stop what you're doing. We're about to come under fire everyone get into defensive positions and get ready oh god so who's that <laughs> huh? gentlemen in england now a bit will think themselves a curse. and everyone gets a crew support character um i mean yeah you totally can because the uh, kismet is effectively a scale five who are you five. pulling out kino i'm guessing and Truzar because they're security um <laughs> dress <laughs> <laughs> what dressed the god yeah so do, I, so do i need to make any kind of check to better organize everyone uh you can you can either roll a rally check to generate some momentum or uh you can roll um presence security or presence command difficulty two to create the advantage of a well-organized camp uh i think i might do the uh the try to create the advantage i'll spend a momentum team dynamics we need to throw all the crew support icons on the map now. <laughs> and I can re-roll one just to see if I can get any momentum out of this. Oh, wait. I rolled the wrong thing. I rolled Reason Science, not Presence Command. Oh, good job. Uh, doesn't matter, all of those would have succeeded anyway, so I generate a momentum. <laughs> and actually, oh, that one. both of those are twos. Because my presence, my command is a five. So, in actuality, I got five successes on a difficulty two task. Cool. So... So you have a well organized camp. Uh, so as long as you're as long as it's um whoops. Oh, what's he doing here? He's security. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> and you 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 said five, so I don't know who else you want to pull out. But that's all of our security. Uh well Thr uh Thralak is already Okay, so we can have five turtle. Oh, there you go. You've got the four others. I don't know what where they're actually going. I'm just kind of moving. Oh man, this is gonna be. It's my character that's never been used. Don't worry, Kino's. Oh, this is a third. I don't know when support characters actually get stuff, but she's being yeah. used. The very first time, nothing. At the second time, and I think every time after that. They... Oh, so she's technically got something because she got blown up in a minefield and then did the generator stuff with her arm once. 
Wow. So she's been used twice. I just don't know what to do with her. <laughs> so those who aren't uh, in this battle, you can choose some of the other support because, uh, yeah, this is going to get rough very fast. Who wants a character? I'll play my character. I'll um, play what one. can you give a supporting character? Because I should probably give it to her now before, you know, death. everything gets complicated. I yep. should not be allowed to play her. Yeah, you're not playing Kino. Uh, uh, you can give her a talent. You can give her a focus. You can increase. Well, I can one give her a talent. Okay. You can increase one uh, discipline. You can give her a value. Okay, I'll give her a talent. <clears throat> Ah, right, there we go. Dead eye marksman, always handy. Yep. Yeah. Uh, are you taking Kino Terror then, Black? Uh, sure, I can. Yeah. Have fun with her. Don't kill her, because that's what the last person early did. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh. I healed her. I fixed it. A pyromaniac and an anarchist. Okay. <laughs> Oh, she's, uh, she's I want to give one or two of these folks fire at will. That's uh, this is the first time Harassar has been out, so... Tachiban is being out again, but don't know who Tachiban belongs to. <laughs> Tachiban was Evans. Oh. oh. Does, so is oh. this actually Kino Tear's third activation? Yes. Okay. So are any of us in cover? Uh, everyone in the camp is, effectively, because you have the advantage of... Okay. So there's no... You don't need to use up an action duck down, because it's assumed that the captain kind of got everyone organized. All right. Um, are you trying to suggest something that Black Wolf for being her third activation? Yeah, fire at will. Grinnan's right. Yeah, <laughs> give her a dead eye mox for the fire at will. I'm fine with that, actually. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a really good combination if you can pull it off. Yep, okay, there we go. She can just. Um, um, I think the draft gets everyone. another one. She's the gun happy explosives expert, but we don't have explosives right now, so her phaser will have to do. Unless she turns that into a bomb. Mm. She would turn that into a bomb. Mm. So are we armed with phaser twos? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I think we yeah we can give Draft another one. So if you want, you could give him fire at will as well. Draft's already horrifying. Oh, this is gonna be such a shit show. Well, it is something if you're gonna use him. I I do enjoy that all of the name security uh, crewmen were in Carter's escape shuttle. <laughs> <laughs> The chief of security has his entire name staff with him. Well, so that's the survived. The uh, captain has gone, by the way. Yep. Well, it has to go back to them. Yep. Actually, yeah. it as their turn begins, something happens in the sky. Uh oh. Orbital bombardment. Uh, where's my things? Really hope not. <laughs> I mean. I didn't say it was. Totally but, yeah, that's a good idea. Oh no. We're full of bombardment implies they don't want prisoners, so. And popping into low orbit is the expedition. Oh. Emergency beam up anyone? Or fire control. Um Either or, or both. Um, the Romulan team advances on the camp. Because it's almost like they are trying to make this harder on it. Whoops. It's so big, the tokens freaking do this. There. Oh, this is going to be a shit show. And you can actually hear uh, from the expedition uh, your air to orbit uh, emplacements, but uh, they're not active at the moment because they weren't really expecting anyone to just jump on top of them like this. 
Uh, they move. Uh, that's their turn. It goes to the f- to you guys. Uh, Varder and Grenon have acted. Uh, okay, I'm going to drop some guards. Okay. Uh, who are you going to shoot? I'll do the one closest, then the other one. Okay, this guy is effectively at medium because he's above you. Rather than at ground level. Uh, threat. One threat? Yep. Um, can I take composure again for increased comp? I will say no in this case. Uh, operative? Mm, yeah. So. Hit. Plus some momentum. Right. Well, we currently got one float. Okay. I'd spend that and. Ooh. Oh, never mind. Yeah, it's not rolling all of it, so I have to click on the rest of it. Done. Can I use that then... one floating and one from the pool to drop the other one? Oh, with Swift Task, yeah? Yep. Yeah. Uh, that guy's effectively long to you. Yeah, that's fine. So, so same again. Take one threat, and I'll spend two momentum. And I'll aim just for shits and giggles. Oh, that'll be another momentum. He didn't use his binder. Oh, he didn't. He didn't aim for the first one. No, I just <laughs> yeah, because he was so close, I just dropped him. Uh, that's a hit, and with a lot of momentum. So what was it? Difficulty three. Yeah. So two momentum out of that. <clears throat> so here's the first half. Second half. With a vicious one disruptor rifle. Oops, no, 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 no. <laughs> How much more stuff is materializing? Just more <laughs> Romulans appearing. Oops. Ah, no, wrong way. Uh, that, that. Oh, goodness gracious. He's hitting the dirt. Oh, snow. So thud. Yeah, and I think next round I'll, I'll break them out and they can get weapons. And that's a Romulan camp. There might be more weapons in the buildings. Oh, yeah, that's what I mean. But next round it'll be a case of breaking them out, then they can get the weapons themselves. Wait. No, I don't think I can do that yet. Becoming your own class 3 vessel. <laughs> yeah, with 23 officers with me. Uh, it goes back to them. Shoot them, Captain. Um... Uh, everyone in the camp, you can uh, roll uh, three challenge dice. This is how much resistance you'll have against the shooting as the whole company opens fire on your camp. Oh, God. Uh, now, whether or not they hit will be my problem. You might be rolling for no reason, but we'll find out. Uh, you said three challenge dice. Okay. So who wants Dref and Tachiban? Is it round back? Oh. Or Kiddick. Yes? No. Do you want to be a quiet as the uh, NPC? Well, uh, have anyone claimed the gigantic fur that is uh, Lieutenant uh, Hussar? Yeah, that's my guy. Oh, Dreth oh, and Tachiban are free. Is it the traitor or the murderer? 
Mm. I'll, I'll play the traitor. Ah, so touchy bomb. Great. Yes. And no one's taking breath then? Other than Kyber. So. Uh, I can roll him quick. Alright, go for it. Oh god. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. It was three, but close enough to end. So. Still two. <laughs> we all got uh, two. Uh, I'm I'm going to have to spend two threat to stay up. Was that 12 total? Yeah. Uh, fortunately, we managed to uh, to suck up uh, two. two. So 10. But, I mean, can't you just spend momentum? <laughs> You can. Oh, can we? Uh, I'm going to spend two. Okay. So Captain's still up after being, as a hail of volley, of disruptor volley fire rips into the camp. Uh, who else wants to make sure that they stay up? Oh, that was against all of us. Yeah. Being attacked by a whole company of these guys sucks. <laughs> mm. Yeah. I'm saying, I'm saying, I assume we have to keep spending okay. more for each of the uh, NPCs, right? Yep. Uh, yep. So I'm saying, who wants to spend more momentum? I'll, I'll keep Drefl. Uh, Keenan will give you two threat. Okay. We can spend one momentum in the threat. I'm not sure what we're doing. I, apparently yeah, we're, we're trying to run. not die. Not yeah. to, you have to stay up after the first volley. We took, we took 12 damage, so we have to spend the stay up. Okay. All of us? Yeah. Oh, 10 yeah. after your cover. 10 after, because all of us managed the soak too. Huh. Uh, so, well, actually, oh, I don't I think you rolled. So, uh, I did not roll. Yeah, roll three challenge dice. Uh, roll three challenge dice. Yeah. Hey. Oh, okay. <laughs> so four. Oh, wow, nice. Uh, that'll still be a uh, injury, though. Yeah, that's yeah, so eight. It's still so you only, Yeah. So I'll spend. Oh, well, Marty. When we start shooting them, is when we get that back. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say. Uh, I assume. I assume the immediate next thing we're going to do is go to the Monarch. The Monarch's not here. Expedition. Yeah. <laughs> okay, sorry. Expedition. Is the Expedition in position? Uh, yes. You're effectively in close range with the planet. Casey, you get to have a little fun. Mr. Casey, uh, fire ship phasers on the uh, Romulan platoon. Aye, <laughs> Captain, with pleasure. But not too much pleasure. Uh, Starfleet appropriate level of pleasure. <laughs> 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 and because this is base three, four, and five. That was fantastic. The captain might want to direct. I, I did. Uh, yeah. uh, okay, so uh, shipboard weapons for folks, I'm assuming. Yes. Difficulty five. Hmm. All right. Uh, that's definitely going to be. I'm going to generate three threat for four dice. I don't seem to have any momentum. Well, yeah, they all spend it. Yeah. So oh, that's a good point. I'll do one one threat spend. Um, and uh, can I spend my determination on the value no plan survives enemy contact? Sure. Uh, you'll have to spend two threat to get the third die, though. That's true. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'll spend two threat then. So I get a reroll, and I'll spend that determination. And here goes nothing. Presence command for the assist. Yes. Okay. There's three. Uh, strategy and tactics for. Yes. Is that Four. six successes. That's six. Six. Hold yeah, on. Six. Yeah. Ship. Plus the ship. Eight. Nice. Three momentum gained. Clutch. Right. Rolled damage. Spread? Oof. 
You do so, spread is a bad idea. I'll tell you that. Right. No, we're well, not area would be a bad idea. Sorry. Yeah, spread would be okay. <laughs> okay, let's uh, hit the camp and everyone tailing them and just obliterate the entire area. <laughs> so that's what one, two, three, four, seven. Um. You know what? Let's spend a momentum to reroll three. Maximize the damage. Here. Four. Yeah. Four. Yeah. Or four. Yeah. Yeah. Might as well. Okay. Oh, wow. Because, because fuck you, I guess. <laughs> so if it's versatile, or, or what are we putting the versatile into? Maybe vicious. Don't, don't worry. You're seen. Don't worry uh, about. It. They have no resistance. They're people on a planet. I was gonna say. I, <laughs> <laughs> it's two more. It's non lethal. I mean, we're not <laughs> stunned, so. Yeah. But how much damage total? I, I'm just curious. If... Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Said main battery to stun. <laughs> yeah, they're going to have a crazy I mean, headache. This is imagine. Basically a TOS episode, so. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. How are we going to run you in territory right now? now? Well, well if, we put, if we put it into vicious, too vicious for the versatile, then you, you know you can't put 19. vicious with versatile. It's oh well, you're seeing our uh, extra damage. We can do two extra damage. We can we can bring up to fourteen. Let's do that. They did twelve, so us doing fourteen giant. to them sounds great. So fourteen damage, uh, puts them instead of just if you got only like five or something like that it would have been like you take out some of them and they're demoralized uh with that much damage that stuns the whole company that's awesome <laughs> so however the forest is now on fire oh no the goo the forest yeah, there's trees down there. Oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> you just yes, you were in a forest. A fire. <laughs> well, <laughs> this map is not accurate. Yes, this map's not accurate. Uh, so, whoop, new. That's ugly looking. Let's, let's do it another way. Oh, no. Did we just commit a war crime? No. We're not at war, so no. I mean, oh, yeah. to be fair, it's only a war crime if people find out. Exactly. Um, so, combat's out, but uh, there's now a forest fire that's raging across this area. With part of the camp caught in it. Okay, so that sounds like the camp's problem is putting that out. Could we use ship's mm -hmm. phasers to cut a fire break around it? Ship's <laughs> 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 phasers made the fire in the first place. <laughs> um... <laughs> No, I, I, I was Can thinking we more like... fire with more fire? Well, but see, wait, the phasers were on stun. I mean, phasers on stun don't catch things on fire. Yeah. But funny enough, there seemed to be some weird material in the trees that catch fire when exposed to energy. It's almost like someone created a complication, like a jerk. Does, does, <laughs> is that the goo? The goo creatures catch fire? <laughs> oh, no, hilariously. No. I mean, they probably will, because they're actually resistant to... Oh, actually, no, that makes sense. Oh, no. <laughs> But thankfully, no goo was caught in the in the crossfire. I mean, you might be caught in the forest fire, but that's a different problem. No goo was harmed in the making of this program. <laughs> All right. Um, so, operation. I'm, I actually have an idea here. Um, so, they use the ship's deflector to um, essentially as a giant fire extinguisher. Mm. Mm. Uh, I will say that is daring engineering. Ah. Uh, Engineering or security, I can see it either way. Difficulty three. We'll use the ship. It's all for, you know, crew. Assisted by the ship's, funny enough, structure plus security or engineering, depending on how you're doing it. Well, uh, since we've got the security officer, maybe Casey's daring and security's better than the ship. Uh, mine's 16. Oh, well, that sounds good. Sounds good. So funny. Please roll complications so you can accidentally smush the people. The cave's all the wrong. I, I don't know if I have an applicable focus though, um, unless oh, you no. predict survival. I would take that in this event. Okay, yeah, then I do. <laughs> awesome. Uh, I will uh, generate a threat for an extra right. dice, and okay. I'm assisted by the ship, correct? Structure or... plus security, yes. Okay, cool. Okay, one threat. Give this. 
this to go. Nice. Made it. Got it. A, and then those on the ground see this, uh, see the light up, it's bathed in it. You see this bright glow of orange and blue wash through the trees like a new wind, and the fire just gets snuffed out before it even gets uh, any uh, momentum, as it were. Okay. Yes. Starfleet. Good work. Uh, you did it. Thank yes. you kindly, Captain. Ops, open uh, healing frequencies down to the surface of the planet. Embarger's busy, probably busy running through two of the Romulans to, you know, secure uh, weaponry and double make sure that they are all indeed down and one, none of them are playing chicken. Get my gun. I'll get your gun. Uh, especially going for the officer, not for Penn's gun, but because he's the officer. Just, just lucky the, the complication wound up being a forest fire instead of, you know, the phasers messing up your gun. It would have been horrible if you're just like, yeah, and you trail too far back and you hit the two tailing the, the column. Uh, who on the ground answers the hail? The, you're being hailed from the ship. Captain Grunin here. Captain Grin, Captain Prax, good to see you're all right. Don't Prax, so excited. you mean... I know he does, he just sounds... Yeah. You mean from the expedition? Yes, Captain. Oh, thank you. Okay. We're in a pretty dire situation here. I don't really know the state of our vessel, but we have an... What was that? that? <laughs> Everybody <just>, like freezes. <laughs> what just happened? Don't worry about it. Everything's fine. We don't know the state of our vessel, but we have uh, we have some wounded down here, um, uh, and a lot of Romulans. I see that. Um, prepare your uh, teams to be beamed up to the vessel. Hi, Captain. Blackwell heads it's to sick bay at a run to be ready for the wounded. I'll, I'll help you. And uh, yeah, we'll start emergency beam out of all Starfleet personnel. And the crash. And, and as the personnel gets uh, beamed up to the ship, uh, on sensors from the expedition. It would appear that the USS Kismet is has crashed into the, or crash landed into the summit of the mountain that dominated this region of the continent. Are we talking like a Star Trek Generations crashed or? Yes. Say, are we? we and it looks one. like it has severe uh, quantum torpedo burns and huge chunks of hull missing. Oh, so like every. So you're going to get a new ship. Every new Trek movie where they constantly crash the Enterprise. Right? No, so, I just mean need a It wasn't that Barter take. couldn't describe warp nacelles. He couldn't describe his own ship's warp nacelles. Womp <laughs> 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 womp. It's like, I don't know, man. It's like... They're there and they're blue. It's like, blue! <laughs> They're long. Like, you're not really narrowing this down, like, at all. You realize this. <laughs> so, presumably, we're going to have a long talk with Prax and we're going to compare notes. Varder still sitting there yeah. going, I told you so, Captain. Hmm? Varder's still going, I told you so. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to be, uh, I, I, like, looking at, uh, I'm assuming, like, looking at the, uh, what's it? The, um, <laughs> like it, uh, on the view screen, probably seeing like the kismet crashed into the mountainside. Says, "Yeah, I'm gonna have a hard time living this one down." So are we taking the Romulans with us? No, no. no. Okay, where well, are we? It's okay. Captain Glitchy Kodak is probably gonna retire, so Grinnan and Grinnan can and the kismet crew can have the Miranda class. salamander. Yeah, yeah. Um, so on that, would Barter have had time to search that Romulan officer then? <laughs> Uh, yes. Because now I want to know if he had anything important on him. You know, like, maybe he's so pretentious that he brought his paperwork with him. Space egg. Because, you know, Romulans be like that. I mean, we have a camp. 
Sometimes they really do be like that. No, I'm not even joking. Sometimes they're actually that stuck up. Uh, yep, roll for me, insight security. Difficulty two. Take or me. just spend two momentum. <laughs> yeah, just I mean, spend two. I've got my determination still. <laughs> so for a giggle, <laughs> more can always be learned as the value. Yeah, I'll give that to you. No, no, pen. Take those back. Um, Guerrilla Warfare for taking information from the enemy? Yep. Uh, yeah, then uh, an extra th a security threat thing for that, and a reroll means. There we go, reroll one for a giggle. Wow, I fucked that bad. I've got the metal to squash complications, though, so that's good. Didn't use that either. <laughs> uh, so what are you for the officer for again? Uh, anything important looking. Uh, he has what looks to be a a very important looking pad in Romulan green with a the seal of the Telshiar on the Oh hell yeah. So that's the like basically anything that looks like I would say documentation, but it can't be actual paper, so the pads well pins, pistols there, I'll take that just to give it back to him later. Not really, I'll keep it. Um Yeah. We can't take him. Are they actually all Telshiar? I uh, looked them over and uh uh, give me insight security difficulty one. That's not free. Or give me one momentum. Come to think of it, it's an extra question. Yeah, just keep the uh, one. Yeah, question. I'll just momentum that. Uh yes. Okay. So and in fact, part of the reason the expedition it. rushed here so was able to rush here so quickly is that this place was not officially listed as a restricted world, but yes. the trail of the kismet led this way. So but where are we anyway? Not Romulan Imperial, Romulan Intelligence. Got it. Uh, you are in the Z Zeta Pectoris system. In, in whose space? Romulan space. Oh. But, but remember, Romans and Starfleet are Sarda kind of allies, but not really. <laughs> You're just not supposed to go to certain worlds without permission, like Romulus, for example. Yeah, but and, Zeta and Pectoris, it's over. just some... It's, a res it's listed as a nature preserve world. I don't feel very preserved here. <laughs> yeah, can we recover Myth from the, the ship? Myth is not aboard the ship. Awesome. <laughs> yes. They are with Baro's body. Should probably get all data logs from the Kismet. <laughs> of what's left. Yeah, I mean, you can beam us up to the ship and then beam us to the Kismet to recover that. And, uh, Set scuttling charges. Don't let any of that technology fall into the oh, wrong hands. Yeah, if the Kismet, we can't flip the Kismet, then we're going to have to do that. And like, and as soon as as soon as Varder like mentions that we're going to have to scuttle the Kismet, he just has this sort of downtrodden look. How will Adler know how to find him? I've got crystal bones. You can find me. <laughs> Not even joking, she can actually find Varder because crystal oh, bones. Is there a way we can scuttle the kids without setting the planet on fire? It's not even more uh, If you wish to recover data from the ship, that will be a control security or control engineering uh, difficulty of two. So uh, that's probably me. Do you want me to do it due to the last security? Or your pens. Ooh, yeah. Yeah, you can do that. We haven't even oh, checked to see if we can actually recover the Kismet. We're just straight to scavenging. <laughs> yeah, can, can we fix the Kismet with duct tape? Um, insight heard. Engineering Difficulty 4. Wait, Who's any wait, good at that? Can, can we bring Dribble in? <laughs> She's so good at duct tape. Can, can I use my focus of starships? Oh, shit, there's a thing I didn't do. Never mind. <laughs> she has a focus of self-sealing symbols. I'm just like, I love her. Um, so yeah, with that flat roll for the insight, um, if there's a way to do it, you don't know. Yeah, I don't want. Um, one threat. One threat. I'm sorry. What's the difficulty for the intelligence? The data.
uh, gaining momentum. Uh, yeah, you're able to pull all relevant, all uh, protected data and confidential data from the uh, computer core, right down to actually pulling like the the gel packs and the chips. Like you're able to have the physical stuff. There's other stuff that's on the computer core, but it's stuff that the Federation shares with everybody, like navigational knowledge, weather, that sort of thing. I mean, I think so. Even though the Kismet's body is gone, her mind lives on. Who wants even to have the place charges? Hmm? Yeah, I mean, we've got the armory right here, so I never believe the ship has its own self destruct verticals, so. I mean, the expedition can just fire a salvo of bomb torpedoes to it, if you want. You can even give the order, Brennan. Internal demolition might be more effective. Probably. Uh, agreed. It would be better Not to do a control, fun. uh, it would be better to be a, uh, can do a controlled warp core detonation. Where's the flare in that, though? Uh, when it explodes, that's the flare. Yeah, and then you set the planet on fire and kill the jellies. I don't even know about the jellies. I'm very meta. <laughs> <sighs> so how do you intend? Uh, I'm actually one of the aliens. I'm not actually Blackwell. Huh? <laughs> That's what I was gonna say. It's not Blackwell. It's his devil. <laughs> if I wanted to be mean to a certain GM, I'd do that. But no, I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> Uh, maybe place some charges around key structures and set the warp core off. Hmm. Sounds good. So sort of control the direction of the blast, basically. Yes, yeah, because it's, if it's embedded into a mountain as well, we don't we don't want to bring the mountain down on them. Precisely. So it's just key structures and warp core. No. Uh. One or both of the captains. Uh, give me insight con difficulty one. Uh, what's your insight con? One or uh, both. You can both do it. Insight uh, con of. Uh, actually, three. all three of you. You're right. <laughs> yeah, that's right. The three captains. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not used to having three captains around. I'll be as insight con. You were asking for a focus. Sorry. Oof. And I don't even know what the task was about. Uh, it was inside con. It was to realize something oh, about Starfleet con. protocol. Con is not good. Do you want? Would you like me to re-roll that? Uh, nah, because because I can still see what the dice are. With I don't think seventeen or eighteen would have uh, no succeeded no. either. <laughs> if it was like ah, oh, you're one off. Like oh, I'll give it to you. I have a ten inside con. Uh, Prax. Would you like to roll, or would you like to forego? So, so Prax and Grenin figure this. Okay. Um, Both of you realize uh, there's a prime directive issue at play. Oh, yeah, yeah. I I kind of was thinking. I just thought I'd point that out to you. And I I will point out, because you did make it, Captains ha- can violate the prime directive on their prerogative if they believe that it is the best action. It is the best course of action, and they ha- they just have to answer to it, uh, answer for it later. But captains get to co- make that call. Uh, the captain looks to Prax and he says, "How hard would it be to um, uh, if if we put the uh, tractor beams of the uh, of the salamander and the uh, expedition together?" think we could pry it loose if we try hard enough we could get her off uh off the planet we could drag her back to to federation space oh god i will fix that for you captain we can try but we have to make sure that uh no starfleet technology is left behind assuming we can tractor it in one piece. Uh, do you want me to head to the salamander then to I'm man their sure tactical systems? Not. Understood. Uh, if that's okay with you, Captain Kiddick? I'm fine with uh, letting a uh, another uh, oh uh, 
a tactical officer that you trust to get your ship off of this, in my opinion, cold, heartless rock. And of course. And the captain stops for a second and he looks at Kiddick, sort of for the first time since all, uh, since this whole mess began and said, I also want to take the opportunity to apologize. You were right. And I claim the right of telling you I told you so. Also, I told the joke on your expense to get out of a very, very bad situation. So we're even. I'll take it. <laughs> For a brief moment, uh, Captain, you have this sense that that really was, it was not at you, but it was weird. It just shakes his head. Okay. Uh, before we pick the ship up and take it out of atmosphere, GM? Uh, no. Okay. Because I probably would have been able to check while I was on board taking the files. Yeah. yeah. And Captain's going to turn to Pen and says, You played right into her hands. Oh, it seems so. You can, you can take one grace out of this. You survived a admiral trying to kill you by any means. <sighs> I suppose so. She probably, Aslan probably thinks we're dead now. That gives us something of an advantage. Yeah, but that won't last for long. Right. It'll be a daring security roll, difficulty four, to retrieve the Kismet intact. Uh, one of the tactical officers of the two ships uh, uh, will be the lead. The sh Both ships assist, and so does the other uh, security officer, because you're pooling your resources together. Uh, mm -hmm. I am... Um... Control security five with a focus. I don't know that you are Narnid. Uh, could I do the direct action on this? Yes. Uh, so was it control or daring security? Sorry. Daring. Okay. Oh, daring uh, security I, 15. I have daring security 16. Okay. You have um, a focus. Uh, shipboard weapon systems applies to tractor beams, correct? It, it, uh, it does for me at least. Okay. Um, I've got shipboard tactical systems, which is basically the same thing. But yeah. Okay, yeah. you can go. I'll follow your lead. Okay. Uh, team dynamics. Barter. Yes. Yep. What's your What's your uh, daring uh, security? Fifteen. Uh, same as me. Cool. I'll be just overseeing this whole thing. Uh, so I'll do a, a threat for one extra dice. That should be all I need with all these assists. Oh, God I mean, damn, I do you want did two again. momentum for an extra dice for shits and giggles? That, was, uh, uh, that is actually guess, a success. Barely. Probably, probably our last uh, roll of the game, yeah, so might as well. <laughs> Take it. Do it. All right. Okay. Yeah, we crushed it. Oh my God, look at <laughs> so all that's, those uh, numbers. So that zero I rolled is actually a success. Because I rolled the wrong thing again. So that's you're really good at that, Grant. Three. Yeah. So that's five games. Five. Wait, we gained five momentum off that. Yeah. <laughs> you have managed to tractor the entirety of the, and in fact, when a, when the parts of it start to fall away, the two security officers are able to calibrate their. Uh, tractor beams to kind of widen the field so when the piece starts falling away it gets caught and it gets pulled along yes so all that's left of the kismet's uh impact on the planet uh is a really nasty cavern that is now mysteriously at the summit barter and i Clearly need to work together more we always crush it <laughs> yeah, <laughs> better, we do. better a mysterious cavern than uh than a starship at the bottom of the mysterious cavern is a Federation logo. <laughs> it is the name. It is, it is like the hull plating for the top uh, where it says USS Kismet. Kismet. Yeah. 
I wouldn't be reverse. too worried about cultural contamination considering the Romulans made the presence there already, so. Yeah. Understood. Yeah, given the Romulans appear to have had a presence there far longer than uh, we had, uh, this may fall under certain Prime Directive protections. Uh, actually, I'll let you in on what I was worried about. Uh, if you blew up that ship well, with a warp drive explosion, uh, you would have taken out the mountain and the surrounding acres around it. Ooh. You would have taken out the yeah, whole forest. That's <laughs> what I was concerned about. And you probably would have killed all the jellies living. Yeah. That for I mean, all of those unconscious Romulans there as well would be fucked. They'd be dead yeah. too, but that's not a prime directive violation. That's a challenging directive of unnecessary force. <laughs> I mean, it, it's also a war crime. <laughs> too. Oh, yeah. someone's gonna have to tell Joker about what? <laughs> Both of his ships are aboard the Kismet. Yeah, not anymore. They're still aboard the Kismet. <laughs> no, oh, they're there. They're just smaller than they were. They're in bits more, and pieces, yeah, or more compact. Up into <laughs> um, compact. That's a good word. That's assuming they're even on the ship, because Joker is, or I assume, also not among the crew we rescued. Uh, so, he's not. You're right. Yeah, he's probably. So, and yeah. I'm okay, guessing one of the fighters is also missing. Yeah. The, yeah. Pretty pink parrot. Uh huh. Yeah. Captain Prax orders. Uh, set course to the nearest starbase. Warp uh, factor sure. seven. Setting course. Warp factor seven. That's the same to Starbase 234. On your mark, engage. <laughs> Hot damn. And that will be. The Wait, end did of the we, episode. Uh, did we scuttle?